I definitely don't want to retrain improve critical. What a great feat. Oh my god. Love it. Jesus <laughs> <laughs> you know you know I'm just saying it to get the reaction. <laughs> It's I swear, Zerdream is the opposite of me on character building. It's like all these feats that like do big damage, I avoid completely because they're so cliche and atypical. Because you know, why would you want to do big damage as you know a war priest? I, most of my characters don't do damage, if you haven't noticed. <laughs> if Tiki wants oh, to yeah, kill no, no, somebody, that's fine. I have I'm to just... make them stop breathing. <laughs> yeah. I, I should uh, play a low damage you hero. You catch them in a net and you drown them. Oh god, like catching things in a net is so easy. I mean, I, I played full leap, thank you very much. He he was a it's low not damage that sort hero. Of damage. <laughs> I was a knowledge and perception bot. Amarcia was your damage character. Yeah, Amarcia was my damage dealer. Kudu kind of is, but I'm like, I don't know, I find myself doing other things <laughs> on Kudu. I might just do some uh, Valera was not my work, Pluto. No, I want a was singing, not my dancing bird from user Urium. That's right. Oh, I, I'm gonna play a not dancing bard, but a singing bard for sure. Awesome. And I will sing for you guys. It'll be only Justin Bieber. Do I not have this in Hero Lab? I think I don't. I'll beat a bard with you and we can start a band. Do you guys want to play a that band? That sounds of bards? like a great time. I know, doesn't it? I'd do it. So I'll I'd go hunt some it. minor monster around the town that's been annoying them. Yeah, like I don't a big know toad what or TV's something. What's he going to do this time? Maybe. Um... Okay. Spend time with Okie Doki, have conversations, check out the sites. Okay, maybe you guys go check out the um, like the normal the normal university they have there. There you go. Instead of the academy. They have like an actual law school there. It's like Tiki's or the mom taking the kid to the school. All right. Kitty, <laughs> yeah, they're like. Want? They're like really confused about you guys. Like what? I'm like asking like, them about birds, their like, asking them these questions. Do you serve bird food? What are the living quarters <laughs> like? <laughs> <laughs> Ron says he'll be here. He's talking to someone. All right. Okay. So probably start without him, and yeah. Alright, I'll have him go in there, though. Um, obviously, since it's a week, there's a week beforehand, uh, everyone can heal the full health from, if you have any damage left over from last session. Uh, but eventually... Uh, let's see, who does he, which of the two of you does he contact? He actually contacts, um, Razael. Perfect. I mean, I was so, the one who kind of, you know, went in there meeting with, a. Uh, it was you Amber, and Amber, so. basically. So he was going to contact one of you two. And he chooses to contact Razael. So he, <laughs> you get, like, a telepathic message from him saying, um, meet me at the academy, I have something to discuss with you about what you, uh, want, wanted to, uh, about this, about the, how to get the fork. I'm assuming okay. 125, okay. uh, words. <laughs> and you can respond in 25 words or less as well, but, uh... What time of day does he contact me? Uh, he contacts you during the evening and says to meet him, like, he says, meet you me tomorrow. Okay, and I'll say we'll come by tomorrow morning. Okay, I'm assuming you go tell everyone else that. And and I'll, I'll um, tell everyone else that we're going to go meet him tomorrow morning at his office to, you know, discuss what he has in store for us. Yep, and I'm sure 
Amber has finished her uh, crossbow that she's building. Um, yep, you can go ahead and add yourself that uh, money that you made from your profession check, like 21 gold or whatever it was. <laughs> Not a whole lot, but it helps. Yep. And, uh... Yeah, I guess Okie Doki will go with you guys as well for this one. <laughs> for the meeting, at least. Sweet. And, uh, yeah, you guys end up back at the academy, and, uh, yeah, he told you guys to meet him at his office this time, so. This time you're actually invited into it, and you don't have to try to break in. Oh. And we knock? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, yep, if you knock at the door, then he, he go, comes at the, over to it and opens it up, and this is, uh, welcome in, and kind of motions for you to come in. And uh, it's it's actually like it's fairly uh, clean actually like it, it's not uh, perhaps you might have been expecting it to be kind of like messy and there be papers and books everywhere but it actually looks like it's very uh, very tidy and organized and there's uh, well there's a good... he obviously doesn't use this office that often because he was gone for so yep. long that's a good point uh, that's maybe what you would also notice as well potentially is that some air, some of the stuff on the side of the room uh, like there's like you know, books and stuff that are on the side, like, they actually seem like they're kind of dusty. But, uh, there's kind of like a, uh, you know, in one corner he's got his desk, and in another corner he's got kind of like a, like a coffee table with, like, some chairs and, like, a kind of like a sofa, kind of. So he's got, like, a kind of a more relaxed area that's, like, kind of open up, and he kind of offers everybody to take a seat and sits in, like, one of the, like, recliner chairs. But it's kind of like a kind of casual setting. All right. He says, before we begin, I, I do still have some questions about uh, your motives here. Do you know what you're getting yourself into? Uh, yeah, I think so. Maybe, maybe Amber should take this one, though. <laughs> um... Do I know what I'm getting myself into? I don't know, do you? That's why he's asking. Excuse me, Professor, but before we start asking each other if we know what we're getting ourselves into, let me first explain that we're adventurers. I'm sure you're familiar with that term. We go and we explore, we fight things, we get the treasure, we bring it back, have a beer on everybody. So, I mean... Does an adventurer really ever know what he is getting into? That's a rhetorical question. So, He's... why don't All we right. skip to the point and tell us? Tiki looks at Bruger like, huh. I never really think about that. I guess we never <laughs> do know what we're getting ourselves into. What happened, Bruger? Well... I do have a matter that someone that fits that description exactly would be particularly useful for. A very uh, dangerous task that I don't think most people would be up for. Now, there is a little bit of risk involved in both ends of this, though. There's risk involved with this task that I'm having, and I think there is a lot of risk even more risk, perhaps, involved with me giving you the tuning fork needed to get to this plane you want to go to. Well, I'm already interested. And before anyone says anything else, I'm not talking about risk to you. I'm talking about r risk to everyone else. I don't know what you think is on that plane, but I'm a little worried about what you what you're trying to find there. I think you know something about that plane that I don't. To be blunt with you, and that worries me. Uh, I'm, I'm... That, that's fine, though, right? You don't, you don't need to know what we're doing. I mean... <laughs> he... He probably well, doesn't want us to, you know, 
he doesn't want to be that guy who sets up uh, the end of the world or something. The end of the world, or like who sets up uh, uh, Rise of the Ruin Lords has already passed, right? So yeah, it has. This is post Rise of the Ruin Lords. Uh, yeah, and he he kind of sighs and he says, "Well, like." And he says, there's a lot of things that have happened in Galarian's history that have, uh, that could have gone worse if the right person didn't make the right decision at just the right time. And I'm hoping to be one of those people. Something that I strive to be. Look. I believe we've been tasked, uh, by Phrasma with dealing with a deity that she has issue with. A lesser deity. Really? And we believe some of the tools that we need are on that demiplane. Well, it seems we have somewhat similar goals in that way, then. I will help you, but I will need help in return with uh, a task of my own. And what going is that to... task? Well, we're going to a particularly dangerous demiplane, and I need some information from it. When we get there... Assuming that you're agreeing to go there with me. Encounter a very terrible being that has been imprisoned there. And all I need you to do is engage it for long enough for me to get that information. I'm not asking for you to defeat it, just you just need to keep it engaged. Keep it distracted, as it were. But can we? How do you mean? Are you I'm asking just saying, if... it, it doesn't ruin anything if we actually do defeat it, right? Oh, well, no, certainly not. Alright. Uh, I want a uh, sense motive on him saying that he, he has the same goals as me. Um, well, okay, so one thing he didn't say that he has the same goals, he says he has similar goals, he thinks. But right. you're yeah, not yeah. really, yeah, you're not really sure what to make of that. Well, hopefully he's not trying to bring Karzog back from the dead or something. What's a Karzog? <laughs> An ancient, powerful wizard. Oh, it sounds like a pansy. He ran amok uh, of the surrounding area recently. A uh, few years back. Well, if you are going to agree to do this, then I will tell you some more information, so prepare yourself. This is a very dangerous task I'm asking you to do. Alright. And how should we well, prepare uh, ourselves? Yeah, can you tell us anything about this, uh, this guardian, this creature? Well, it's a very ancient uh, being that has a lot of knowledge and always hungers for more. When you when we get there, it will try to pull us into a uh, a dreamscape of sorts. And what I'm asking you to do is to willingly enter it. This dreamscape. Yes. Now you want to prepare yourself mentally any sort of uh, mind 
uh, protecting and enchantments and and abjurations that you can uh, that you can come up with. Hmm. Okay. And then, like I said, when you get there, all you need to do is just keep it distracted. Don't let it completely dominate your minds. Sounds easy enough. Sounds like we need, like, that 8th level spell that gives us plus uh, 8 resistance on mind-affecting effects. Yeah, that'd be really useful. If only I could cast 8th level spells. You technically can. Can I? Yeah, just get a scroll. Get a scroll of it. Yeah. I don't know if they sell those in Corvosa, but... I forget what, I mean. what that scroll's called. Mind blank? Mind blank? Yeah, mind blank. Is there anything similar to mind blank? I guess there's heroism. Yeah, heroism is like mind blank. Well, I mean, if we're talking about things dominating or controlling or even possessing others, protection from evil is, uh, or protection from whatever, you know, alignment, that is also a good spell. Uh, Tiki has that, right? I don't know. Magic circle against evil? I think so. Tiki That's also, usually, yeah, that works. His, yeah, that one does the same thing as protection from evil, except it's AoE. But yeah, it hard counters possession effects. And our war priest can prepare uh, protection spells. Yeah. So he's going to ask you too. Like, do you guys want to go today, or do you want do you want to spend a day to prepare? I want to spend a day pre to prepare. Yeah, very that well. One. How much does an eighth level scroll cost? A lot. It's a bit. Juan Juan. Hey, hey Ron's Ron. here. He's not in the right channel. He's talking in the wrong channel. He's talking to himself. Probably. Um, but yeah, alright then. So he says, um, Says, so, so, all right then. Well, in that case, meet me back here tomorrow morning, and we will we'll set out. If you have any more questions, I I will try to answer them. I've been to this plane one other time before. Did you uh, enter the mindscape? Uh, not willingly, but yes. I was able to escape. What was it like? It was uh, terrifying. It drew forth things, terrible things from my past that I never wanted to see again. And it used them against me. Sounds like fear. It will probably try to do something similar. Bravery will be useful here. Indeed. Ah, scroll of mind blank. Uh, only costs three thousand gold pieces. Only three thousand gold. Only. Well, I guess Brewer is gonna go buy some some stuff with the money he's got. All right. Yep. That's what I think I'm gonna do.
<clears throat> so it I'm going to... It also prevents all divination magic. Yeah, that's that's actually the biggest bonus from Mind Blank. Yes. I mean, it used it used to be bigger in three five. It used to completely make you immune to all mind affecting spells and effects. I guess technically you can actually find a scroll of mind blank in Corvosa. It's spellcast dealing with his eighth. You can't find communal mind blank, but you could find a scroll of regular mind blank there. Who can be? I know I want to find a scroll of Mindscape Door. What? The hell is that? That's a decent idea. Mindscape Door it lets you teleport in and out of Mindscapes. Oh, we're going to Mindscape? We're playing yep. Runescape. Um, I don't know how much that costs. It's gonna be less. I think it's only like a fifth level spell or something, or it's a fourth level spell. It's oh, okay, a same level. Or... It should cost the same as a dimension door. It's uh, well, it's it's on the mage sorcerer. It's like on the wizard sorcerer spell list, but I think it's a lower level for like psychics. Oh, oh, it's it a is. Spell? Okay. I'm just gonna add a demen a scroll of dimension door because it costs the same, and I don't have uh, cult adventures activated on this character sheet. Oh, okay. here we are. Level 4, Wizard Sork, level 3, Psychic Mesmer. This is 700 gold. I'm going to buy that at that price. Okay. Uh, wait, what? The Mindscape Door Scroll. Why are we... are we planning on getting stuck in a Mindscape? He uh, wants so us to go into a mindscape. Oh, is that the the creature that, that is guarding the plane? He says he wants us to distract it. We don't have to defeat it. That he just wants us to distract it while he gathers information on it. And in order, f what he wants us to do so, is to enter the mindscape that it. I guess it will use or something about it. Yeah. And engage it in its mindscape. As a recap here, this is something that is imprisoned on this on a demi plane, and yeah, he says when you go there, it's gonna it's gonna try to pull you into a mindscape, and he wants you to engage with it in the mindscape in order like long enough for him to get the information he needs. And he says that we're gonna need mental defenses Ooh. Yep. to protect against like domination and other stuff like I that. I don't know so... how to protect my brain. Yes, you do. I do? You have magic circle. Oh. Yeah, I'm not even sure that's giving me Magic circle, anymore. uh... Well, it's still kind magic of... Magic circle. Yeah, but... It's a plus two it resistance does... bonus, but... It prevents... A creature from exercising possession or mental control over other creatures. Yeah, it has a specific clause that... Even if you don't get the resistance bonus, because it doesn't stack with everyone's uh, amulets or whatever, or cloaks... Okay. Uh, it does that, so. You know what? I don't really want to deal with visions of my past. I hear they were pretty traumatic for me, so I'm gonna go ahead and purchase me a mind blank scroll, too. Alright. I do have enough for that. Well, Brugar's gonna buy a potion of remove fear, because it sounds like we're gonna deal with fear, too. Uh, is there something I should okay. buy? Anything that improves mental defenses, I guess, is what Pluto's telling us. What is my will? Well, that's what uh, oh, that's what Athos. I put myself in do. chat, Pluto, in case you're curious what I'm doing. Yeah, I see it. Uh, cool. Am I um, wearing anything to boost my will? Tiki, and I need to look at If you spells. have the money, can you get a scroll of plane shift? Actually, uh, I'll I'll get it for you. How much does it cost? I don't know. I'm still trying to figure. Like my ah, my will save is really bad. Will save more like won't save. Um, what can I buy to help? Hmm. 
I'm going to buy a cleric plane shift that Tiki, Tiki King has 5th level spells I believe, so she can just use this. Um, am I wearing a headband? I am. Uh, shoot. Yeah, I got some gold. What what do you need me to buy? No, I, I already bought it. I bought uh, a scroll of plane shift on the cleric list. Why don't we just get two of those? For just in cases. Okay. I'll buy the other one. Wait. Uh, right, scrolls. I have, I have to make that in here like and, of course, get Tuning Forks for the Material Plane. Wait, yeah, but, uh, any of, the, any of the forks for the, uh, for, like, the major planes are basically considered free. Free, yeah. Use. I'm gonna spend 2,000 gold and get a heavy, ha uh, handy haversack. A good that item. way I can just move action to get all my stuff. Uh, yep. Oh, these are only 700 gold pieces for that scroll. That's what fucking I... cheap. Scroll of Plane uh, Shift, can level you hear me? 4? 700 gold pieces. No, it's level you. 5. 4 for me. Well, I think it's a 5th level Hi, cleric spell. Uh, oh. I'm gonna buy um, Spell Strike Gloves. Let me... Let me look at that. Thing. It's a fifth level cleric oracle spell. Oh, this is just Hero Lab showing me all the others. Okay. I think there's like a specific uh, like domain or something maybe that gives it to you at fourth level. Potentially for a cleric. I don't know though. So what is this? Fourth level one. Is that something you could buy here? Spell strike Mediums. Gloves? Mediums can cast it at fourth level. Damn. Yeah, but a fourth level median, like, that's as high as their spells go. Oh, really? That's so. <clears throat> okay, so we have a spare scroll. What else do I want? Pluto, do I know if we're going to be fighting, if the thing we're fighting against is an outsider? I'm gonna buy a potion or not. fly. Um, that was something that nobody asked. But you could go ask, or you could say you asked before you left. If I uh, buy a that's potion okay with of you. I, I would like to know, like, is he an outsider? Is he a demon? You know, what what's the what kind of creature are we fighting? Is he evil? Uh, he says it's definitely evil. Um. Uh, he says, I don't believe it's an outsider. Okay, and for me, Zerdurium, who doesn't really know things, does outsider mean, like, is outsider a bigger generic of, like, demon? No. Outsiders include demons, devils, angels, like, anything, or elementals, anything that is not from the <clears throat> material plane is an outsider. Basically, knowledge planes. Okay. Everything for knowledge Yeah, planes. anything that's under knowledge planes. Okay, and he said he doesn't believe it's an outsider, but it is. No, in I believe the I believe it's I believe it's some sort of creature that's actually native to the material plane before it was imprisoned in this demi plane. Oh, okay. I was gonna say because I was definitely going to prepare things that are good against outsiders, but I'm glad I asked. Oh, I can get a portion of. Actually, the... no. What's it called? I take that back. I think it might be an outsider. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think it might technically be an outsider. But you think he came to the material plane oh, and then was sent, sent back? He was imprisoned on there. It, 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 I'm not really entirely sure, to be honest. There we go. Potion of Owl's Wisdom. That's what I'll bring. This guy's so useful. <sighs> okay. I'm bring two of those. 
It might be uh, an outsider. I'm stocking up on potions, Pluto. Okay, I'm not gonna count on it. <laughs> oh, Al's wisdom is a good idea. Okay, so two of Al's wisdom, two fly, a scroll of plane shift. But he does tell you it is definitely evil. That much you can be sure of. Okay. I ask, well, um, what does this thing look like? Does it walk on two legs? Does it fly? It's a uh, large creature that is uh, that is chained in place within this demi-plane. Uh, it's uh, it was very it was difficult for me to make out its features entirely because it was covered in uh, um, like uh, tattered like rags and, and such and like uh, with a hood and everything. So I couldn't really make it out, but it appeared to be a, uh, humanoid or humanoid like all right it did it did seem to have two two legs and two arms as far as i could tell did it seem to wield any kind of weapon no it's it's able to move a little bit and it's um but like i said it i never got in rain in melee range of it or anything like that it was able to cast spells but it was not able to speak it as uh it was uh bound um or gagged, I guess you could say. It it was it seemed to be at least. It never said anything, but it did cast spells. Okay. It's not meta knowledge, it's an illusion. <laughs> And Amber actually gets the sense that he seems to know more about it than he's actually telling you with that sense motive that you rolled earlier. Uh... Do I press? I don't know, do you? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna press for more information. Uh, Look, we're helping you out here, and we're potentially risking our lives. I think you know more than uh, what you've told us. Well, what I'll tell you is that I believe this is a very, very powerful sorcerer. And that is uh, some sort of hag, or at least it used to be. Oh no, not hags! It used Your to be part of a... fears were confirmed. <laughs> it used to be part of a uh, of a coven. There, there were two others. Oh my god! Similar, similar power, but this one's by itself. It's been. I'm, but I'm not sure. They were so weak I've never, before. I've never found out if the other two that were with this one were uh, were imprisoned as well somewhere else or not. But this is the only one that I've found. And uh, as I said, it. I believe it has some very specific knowledge that I need from it. Knowledge about what? A uh, very important task that I need to. Uh, tried to stop somebody from getting somewhere and it it's going to in, or, in order to get that information i need this is the only place i can know of that might have it i need to get this information first let me guess he's trying to stop us that he doesn't know it i doubt it <laughs> okay it's probably trying to stop delpho I don't say that aloud. <laughs> Alright. I gotta make a phone call. I'll be back. Uh, I'm, I'm ready to go now. Okay. How do I cast spells that are above my caster level? You either do it with a UMD check, or you do a caster level check. 
whichever you're better at. Uh, uh, I am slightly better at UMD. I'm not sure if the DCs are different based on whether you're using UMD or... or let me see here. Uh, activating a spell. Uh, let's see. If the user meets... If you are... If the user meets all requirements above and your, ca your caster level, you can do it automatically. If you meet all three, but your caster level is lower than the scroll, than the scroll spell's caster level, you have to make a caster level check DC equal to the scroll's caster level plus one to cast the spell successfully. Uh, might be easier to do with a caster level. So let's see, like, so for the mind blank one, what's the caster level on that thing? Uh, like the minimum caster 15. level. 15. 15, so the DC would be, you have to make a DC 16 caster level check. So I have to roll so a 6. Yeah, that might be, be that might be easier. For UMD, you'd have to roll, uh... So, for use magic device to activate a scroll, you would need to do 20 plus uh, the caster level. So 20 plus, you'd have to roll uh, 35 UMD. So actually it's a lot easier to do it in a caster level check. Yes, I'm not using UMD for this. My UMD <laughs> is plus 14. Uh, I guess I'll go ahead and roll that uh, on the day of departure. I'm going to cast Mind Blank on myself. Alright. Go ahead and roll that caster level check. It doesn't consume the scroll if I fail, right? It uh, does. Only if there's a mishap. I'm pretty yeah, sure. If you fuck it up, it it, it, it can, but you you make it, so you I, might I, like... I didn't fuck it up. <laughs> well, there goes 3,000 gold pieces. Oh, wait, what'd you cast? <laughs> well spent. You guys, mind blank, because <laughs> I, I think I have a traumatic past that I don't want to be brought back up. <laughs> <laughs> well, so wait, wimp. Mantis, can you give me a brief description of what that actually does for you. Oh. It's it gives, a plus uh, eight bonus to uh, mind affecting effects, and it gives immunity to any kind of divination. Okay, yep. then I'm not going to worry about you. You're fine. The cool part about Mind Blank is because it gives immunity to divination effects, a lot of things like Sea Invisibility and even True Sight are divination. So if you have Mind Blank on you and you're invisible, there's very few ways of actually being seen. Yeah. Echolocation is one of the few. Yeah, you basically have to have like a, another extraordinary sense. Um, alright. I guess as soon as Secret gets back, I'm gonna begin I'm back. the... Oh, you are back. Okay, cool. Uh, is Ron here? Yeah. Alright, cool. Ron, you doing anything beforehand here? You catch what we're doing? I... No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Going into a demi-plane, uh... You're gonna fight a, uh... Super powerful hag, except you're not expected to actually, and you're gonna go into like a mindscape, so there. Um, Athos was telling you you should probably shore up your mental defenses if you don't have anything else you want to get. Oh, okay. Um, that's what people are buying. Are there any planar effects we need to worry about going to this demi plane? Uh, Avos tells you no. It sh other than the the creature imprisoned there, it shouldn't be. There shouldn't be anything in particular you should be worried about. What? Sally's not okay. a hero. She's not a humanoid. Oh, does it specify humanoid? Oh man. No, but I'm I uh, I. That's five third level spells that I'm casting. Yeah, it's using up a lot. Alright, I'm preparing a spell 
for my fourth level slot now that he told me that it's not going to be have no no bad plane effects. I think I can do that. It's like Are some we going minutes now? per spell. Is that why we're spelling up? Just yeah, we're going yeah. now. Wish. Okay. Uh, mage armor, magic circle. Uh... Amber, um, do you have that spell that turns the the thing into like something really good, just in case I have to use it? I do have the spell, but it only lasts minutes per level. Okay, just I'm just wondering. I'm just you know, just in case we need it. Yeah, I I have it ready. Okay. Uh, I'll be on uh salary. So before you guys go, Athos asks you, is anybody have any of you ever been in, inside of a mindscape before? No. I should probably my head. no. <laughs> probably. <laughs> probably but well. I don't remember. <laughs> yeah. Well, Can I still swing my weapons in a mindscape? Arm is my armor useful in a mindscape? Depends. Uh, the thing that most likely happens in this mindscape is that the the hag will probably summon things from with from your past. Perhaps they might not be they might be warped, but they'll probably be things that are somewhat recognizable from your past and. Uh, they will probably try to kill you. Now, if you die within the Mindscape, what will probably happen in this case is that she will, tr this hag will try to uh, basically trap your consciousness uh, within a uh, Dreamstone that she has. That's uh, attached to her, basically, within her... Uh, so, I guess what I'm saying is, if you if you die uh, within the dreamscape, it will be sort of like dying in real life, but honestly, worse. So try not to let that happen. Well, I mean, if you're dead, you won't know, right? It'll be something worse than death, I'm afraid. What? Because Just... your soul will be trapped. Your soul will know what's going on. But I will know yeah, what's going on. Yeah, just don't let it happen. Right? Uh... That's a good question. Look, Tiki, you're not gonna die. Okay. If you have ways to escape and things start looking south, uh... Well, I sure do. I have this scroll here. I won't. I won't hold it against you if you leave. I probably shouldn't hold both. So Amber, hold on to one. I'll hold the other. All right. Yeah, I, I have also... one of the scrolls of plane shift, and if I need to, I can make a caster level check for that one too, which will be much easier. It'll I have ways be like of, a caster uh... level twelve or something. Yeah. Thirteen. I have ways of getting out of here as well if I need to. And I don't need to make a caster level check for Mindscape Door. But that is not a spell that sorcerers should necessarily have on their spell list. But it's not on your list? Or like you don't think you think it's too narrow for a sorcerer to want to take normally? I think it's too narrow for a sorcerer to want to take. <laughs> Unless you're in a specific campaign that it, it's like really good in. <clears throat> yeah. But in general, I think it's too narrow. Yeah. Alright, is everybody ready then? Yes. As ready yep. as we'll ever be. I think I have all the spells I can put on for now. Although, now that Amber used that Mindscape scroll, why don't we wait a day to go? What? The mind blank? Yeah, let's just not go uh, so yeah, that, that uh, scroll gets wasted. Yeah. That sounds awesome to me. I'm I'm 100% for that. <laughs> Uh, Okie dokie says that this sounds really crazy and all, but I'm gonna wait here. That's fine, Okie dokie. We say Okie dokie. Okie dokie, Okie dokie. Okie dokie, <laughs> that's good, because I have an important task for you. 
Oh. Back uh, all right, Chief. What do you need me to do? Uh, I need you to uh, go and deliver a message to this doll maker. And I'm going to hand him the message and tell him where to find the doll maker. Uh, all right. I'll uh, I'll take care of it, boss. Which doll maker is she talking about? I don't know. Maybe the one in Corvosa. Yeah, the one in Corvosa. And this is that it's a really important task that only he can do. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know if you really needed to convince him, but he he seems convinced. It's like, all right, you got it, Chief. I'll uh. Got the top bird on the job. Good. <laughs> I love Okie Dokie. And uh, just want to make goes... sure he feels useful. Yeah, he goes and and starts. He flies off to go deliver that message. Uh, Athos. Let's see. Can he actually get everybody there? With plane. Uh, with uh, plane shift. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he can actually. There's not limits on it like there is for teleport. All right. Yep. There, so, there is a limit, but it's like eight it's a hard creatures. Limit. Yeah, it's it's a hard limit. It's not a scalable limit the way that it is like teleport. So you don't have to be like, is he high enough caster level? It doesn't matter. He can, he can but he, yeah, so he can do it. And if you want to do more than eight, you got to start using things like gate. Um, so yeah, he's going to uh play. So there's you seven guys. of us. There are. Plus him is eight. That's eight. So yeah, it's pretty much you have like the maximum Barely amount, enough. basically. If you count, if you count the familiar like, and the... the familiar shouldn't count. Familiar is yeah, tiny. You... Yeah, if you don't count the familiar, then it's seven. But he, he can do it in, in either in either case. So okay. Okay. All right. As imagine him being uh, like bo 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 bo, and then we jump into the picture. <laughs> sort of. Yeah. Everyone gathers into a circle. Uh, I guess I'll wait one second for Seeger to get back, though, before I pull her one in here. I don't want to, like, have to describe it twice. So, any other last-minute preparations before I do this? I don't think so. Athos, are we gonna have to fight this thing as soon as we get in there, or will we have, will we see it, or, or like, will will we have to go find it? No, it's a very small demi plane. We'll see it right when we get there. Okay, in that case, so I should cast like minutes per level spells. Yes. Okay, I'm going to cast protection from. Uh, first I'm going to cast Bless on the party. Okay. Which is a plus one morale bonus on attacks and saving throws. Or, on attacks and saving throws against fear effects. And that last. I mean, the 10 fear minutes. effects won't help because we have heroism. Sure. Whatever, you get plus one on attacks. And I will cast on myself. Oh, I don't know. Actually, that also won't help because we have heroism. What won't Whatever. help? Bless, it's a morale Bless. bonus. It's no. literally less than... Whatever, fine. Um... Yeah. So like if some if a spell lasts like ten minutes total, I should cast it now. Yeah, probably. Okay, angelic aspect lesser on myself. I should roll these. Why is it rolling numbers? Oh, for that stuff. Concentration and stuff, which um we're about right now. This lasts ten minutes. I'll cast that. Sure. Razile doing Razile things. Um, I'm going to align my weapon to be good as well. 
since I know I'm fighting evil. And I'll cast Divine Favor as well. Alright, so Secret's back. Secret, last last minute, uh, any buffs you want to cast. But I'll cast said you're gonna teleport myself. says when you teleport in there, you're going to be right in there with it, so you should probably cast minutes per level buffs if you're going to do those as well. Minutes per levels? Okay. Uh... Yep. <laughs> Possibly even rounds per levels if you want to do it right before he, cast he finishes casting Plane Shift. Yeah, can you check on him? You know what? Okay, uh, I am going it. to reach into Brugar's handy haversack, and I'm going to cast uh, the shape. Uh, mm -hmm. Change change the god slayer into oh, a okay. god slaying dwarven longhammer. Okay. You have, have to it pre uh, it. pre transformed. All right. Well, it's in my bag of holding. Right, did I reached that we in cast there and did that. Heroism on the whole party. I think yes, I cast heroism all... on okay. everybody except for the familiar and the animal companion. I don't think he cast it on Athos either. That's correct. He's not part of the party. <laughs> he wants to be part of the party, though. Maybe I should just do against what he says and shoot it with my mage's crossbow using enervation six times. Did anyone cast haste or are we waiting on that one? I'm waiting on that one. Oh, I'm also going to cast this spell. No, he's, he's not actually trying to become part of the party. I have six images. Okay. Wait, why is there spell failure on this? Uh, I don't know. There shouldn't be. It's a... It's a war priest spell. Yeah. I'm going to cast uh, Bears Endurance. I must have done something wrong. Anyways, I'm casting that on my weapon, on my good one. So it's okay, Bane okay. against evil outsiders. I'm so sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, greater fortification on Brugar. Um... Yay. Uh, the magic circle's up, the greater fortification's up, the... Uh, do, did we say anything I'll about I'll protection from evil on Brugar. Do we, do we need... Resistances? Not that he knows of. Okay. But he did mention that it's gonna pull and it's gonna pull stuff from people's memories in the mindscape. So maybe if there's a reason that a particular you might need it, then I guess. Um, yeah, I'll worry about that later. And then um, Tiki's actually going to be on Sally and I'm gonna have two things in her hands um, and both of those are potions <laughs> okay so, so I cast like Al's 12 spells hand, and potion how... wait this isn't the plane that we're trying to get to this is somewhere else so like will there be gravity yep uh, yeah. Okay, then po a potion of fly in one hand and a potion of Al's wisdom in the other hand. And I'm ready. Okay. Alright, uh, then he is going to begin he's going to begin casting plane shift. Anybody want to cast a spell, like, during that same round? Before he finishes casting plane shift? No. I'm I will. Cast fly. Okay. This would be a good time to cast rounds per level spells, is what I'm getting oh. at. Oh, Because I'm going to okay. have you roll initiative. 
right when you get there. I mean, suppose I will cast haste then. Okay. Everyone has haste. So the whole party also has channel vigor. Okay. Channel vigor? Basically it means that since we already have haste, you don't want to use that effect, but at the beginning of your round, Blessing you can choose to gain... You mean? No. No. What is channel vigor? Uh, I'll paste it in chat, or no, it's kind of there, but... Lot. Here. Those are the effects you can choose. You can choose one at the beginning of each of your rounds. I'm going to choose Spirit. Yeah, plus six on competence bonus on will saves. That's pretty good. I'm doing that one. All right. So everybody's cast and we tell anything they wanted to do. I'm going I'm um, yep, yeah. to... Plane shift is going to happen. I have to finish my job, so I'll be back. All right, I'm going to wait as soon as you're back then. Did Atho seem surprised by the number of spells I cast? No. Is he impressed? Not at all. Uh, really? You can roll a sense motive. You can roll a sense motive. Sense motive to see if you think he's impressed. Do I think he's impressed? Uh, you can't tell. He doesn't seem to react very much to it. Okay. But I, I did cast one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, like eleven spells because I didn't put the first few in. Good job, I guess. <laughs> so some of the minutes per level are probably gonna be like, I don't know, eighty percent instead of a hundred percent. Soon as Secret's back, I'm going to pull you guys to this map. She says carry on. Alright. I'm just going to pull you guys to the map then. And I'm... So, he finishes casting Plane Shift, and you appear in what seems to be a fairly large dome. Um, no, but there's no like entrances or anything like that. There seems to be like kind of uh, a lighting, but it doesn't seem to like. There's no shadows anywhere. There, the lighting seems to just kind of be um, built in within the environment. It doesn't seem to actually come from any particular place. Uh, standing at the opposite end of this dome, you see a large figure that is chained to... Uh, like, chained up to the walls. Now you kind of kind of see that on the map here, hopefully. Um, and Those are uh, some cool chains. Oh, thanks. It's the most work I've ever done on mm -hmm. Rope 20. <laughs> and uh, it, uh, when he goes in there, it kind of, you know, like it's it's kind of stooped over and it kind of starts, stands a little bit more straight and uh, kind of pulls at the chains and you kind of hear like the, the like kind of a strange, almost uh, entrancing kind of sound coming from the chains. Everybody can go ahead and immediately roll a will save and initiative. Okay. We're supposed to fail this, this, right? A... Uh, you don't need to fail this one yet, but there's going to be one that he'll tell you. He'll tell you when he wants you to. Okay. Um, so I am using the spirit check uh, to get yep. a plus six competence bonus. I thought I had buffs for that. I do have buffs for that. Man, I'm good. So, not really displayed very well with this picture. You can kind of see from the sides there are like these kind of horns coming out, kind of curling out on, on either side of this creature's head, uh, sticking out from underneath the, like, the ragged hood a little bit. Um, this creature does appear to be large, um, and stands, 
uh, even though it's kind of hunched a little bit because of the chains holding it back, probably stands at least 12 feet tall. Um, if anybody has knowledge planes, they might be able to tell what this is as well. It is a pretty difficult check, but I think it's doable for Amber at least. Well, I don't get the mind one, so... Maybe I'll wait till next round to do that. Okay. Uh... No, I'll, I'll, I'll just roll. It's a good roll. Uh, yep, you can tell that this is a, um, this seems larger than what you would normally expect it to be, but you fit, you're pretty sure that this is a, what is called a Dream Thief hag. So you know it does count as an outsider, um, you know that it can, uh, manipulate dreams, and, uh, this, you know that it, uh, you know that if it bites you, which should be difficult for it to do because it's chained up and has its mouth gagged, but if it bite, if it were able to bite you, it can seal your spells for, uh, um, for one round and prevent you from casting spells or using int-based skills or checks. Uh, you know that it has damage Sounds reduction unpleasant. versus... Magic and cold iron, and uh, that it can change. It can also change shape normally, and it has spell resistance as well. Okay. I thought somewhere there was a morale bonus to will saves. Was there not? Uh, let me roll this thing's initiative. It rolled super low. Uh, that is in heroism. Oh, it's a morale bonus. Yes, heroism is a morale bonus, which is why Bless does nothing. I guess that was built into my role then. Okay. Alright, so let's see, what do everyone's will saves look like? And then the resistance 35. bonus from protection from evil doesn't stack with cloak of resistance. That is correct. That is correct. Okay, yeah, so mine's, mine's correct. 26. I rolled a 4. Um, what is the save bonus on this thing, actually? I'm not listing it, but it should be... Okay, so it looks like Tiki everybody... Didn't roll will save. Tiki did not roll a will save. I don't know if Secret's here, so I'll just roll it from her character sheet, I guess. And roll it from Sally's character sheet. This is why I wanted everyone to be here. <laughs> um, Well, part of why. Let's see here. Character sheet. I don't think I want to GM anymore. I just have to play all the other characters for them. Oh my god, roll 20 is not responding. Come on. I should just have to wait. Usually if I wait it out, it'll start working again. Yep, everyone's at full health if you didn't already adjust that. Hey, there's a will save. 21. Yeah, it's because I, I rolled it. <laughs> and then if I can get Tiki's in here as well. Will save. That's because we were right. waiting on it. Like you were waiting for it to go. Yeah. 
All right, so let's see here. Will saves. It looks like. Um, where is Raziel's will save? There it is. Twenty six. Okay, good. Uh, I rolled Kale's a four. Will save. Did I get Kale's will save? Is that that thirty five? Yeah, thirty five or something like that. Okay. Um, it looks like everybody except for Tiki made this save. So Tiki uh, kind of feels uh, sleepy. Um, all right, start of the round is going to be Amber's turn. So right when you guys get here, he says when the next effect, she's going to try to pull us into into a into a mindscape. Um, that's the one you're going to want to let her do it. What do you do though? Uh, she's not immune to negative energy, I sense energy, his motive right? when he says that. Uh, as far as you know, she is not immune to negative energy. You do know she has spell resistance, though. But I think Athos has, has our best interest at heart when he says we should fail the will save. Uh, you're not sure. Boy. This is scary. Uh, I'm going to take mind... Uh, and I am going to, uh, make a ranged touch attack on this thing. Okay. Um, this thing has spell resistance, so I get it a sure plus does. Th three and a plus four. Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. Last minute work. No worries. You just failed Sorry. a will save, don't worry about it. You're just sleepy. What happened? The 31 hit touch. 31 hit touch. He catches the spell as soon as we showed up. Oh. Uh, spell resistant. Do I overcome spell resistance? Spell resistance. You do. One negative level. Dang. Um, I think that's under other adjustment. Maybe not. I don't see where it's at on here in Hero Lab. That's annoying. All right, you apply a negative level. Uh, Razael, it's your turn. Oh boy, he she is kind of far away. We do have haste uh, and three damage. And three damage? What? No, I'm 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 teasing. If if the spell does damage, it also adds the crossbow's enhancement bonus. It doesn't actually do damage. Okay, so I don't think I can actually do too much here. Hmm. Oh boy, what's this spell do? This looks fun. Oh, I may uh... have had to get closer to do that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to delay my action unless this spell is good range. Dude, we're so far away. What is this garbage? Yeah, it's a really large demiplane. Okay, I'm going to... I'm just going to guess and cast Dispel Magic on the Hag. Rolled pretty well. All right, 26 you cast level magic. Check. And I want to get rid of the strongest thing I can get rid of. Noted. He just frees the God thing. damn it. She didn't have... Oh, oh man, don't say that. <laughs> don't say that kind of stuff. 
On the hag, not on the chains or any of that shit. On the hag. What, right. did someone cast like a permanent some shit on it to hold it there? Maybe. Oh god. Oh god. Magic around all over the what's, place. Uh, what's thinking. the range on that? No, oh, it's 200. No, it's 200, fine. so I can reach it. Yeah. I made sure. Can you move anywhere? Uh, no. I'm gonna stay here because now I'm scared. That's okay. my turn. Uh, Kale's turn. The hack just like dimension door out or, or teleport out. Planar shift out. Okay. Leaves us. Holy god, I have to scroll out so far. Yeah, it's a pretty large map. Alright, so I'm going to cast Irradiate on it. Uh, Alright. Wait, how did Amber get up that far? I moved. Does Irradiate allow spell resistance? Uh, shoot. It doesn't say it in my description. Effect, special, spell, re no, no. Spell resist, no. Spell okay. resistance, no. That's no. what it says. Alright. Um, caster level is... God damn it, I don't know how this... You need a, you know how it works, right? You can walk me through DC it. DC seventeen, yeah, yeah. DC seventeen, okay. Uh, what type of save is it? Fort save. Yeah. All right, I am going to roll the fort save then. Uh, she makes a save. Dang. Okay. So does it have like a partial effect? Or yeah, it, it has a partial negated? effect. I think that's um, later it though. Yeah, it's later. Okay, so nothing happens for now then. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, uh, Brugar, do you do anything? I take out my uh, what should I call it? I take out my uh, my hammer and my shield. As okay. Both move action. I take a five foot step forward, and I I call out, "You good over there, Amber?" Uh, I hope so. Alright, it's on its turn now. Oh Athos God. yells out. Just let it do its thing. Let it, it is go. Going to, it is going to uh, unleash an ability. You kind of feel this uh, rippling wave kind of shoot out towards you. And everyone kind of begins to feel as if they're about to be uh, as they're kind of falling asleep and as if they're kind of uh, drifting out of their body almost. Uh, everyone has the option, though, of making a will save if they want to. But you can intentionally fail the will save if you want to enter the mindscape. Do I know that that's I'm the only one who can get people mindscape? out of the mindscape. So, as much as I want to keep shooting it with negative, ener negative levels, I think I'm going to join in to the mindscape with the rest of the party. Okay. Is anybody not going to do that? Do I know that it's the Mindscape spell? Was that spellcraft check? Uh, you are pretty sure that it is. Okay, if I'm pretty sure it's a Mindscape I'll, spell, uh, then I'll let it let it happen. I'll let it happen, assuming I don't think he's Wait. trying to trick us. Wait. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking a minute. <laughs> I can enter right. the Mindscape through Mindscape door, right? Uh, yeah, in theory. Let's not waste money. I'll, I, I'm, I'm going to 
hope that Pluto isn't going to be like, haha, I've TPK'd you now. You fell for my trick. Uh, I'm, I'm going to fail the will save. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty dumb if this was all set up to die. That would be pretty silly. But that would, yeah, that would I, not be a good GM. I'm move. tired of this game. I'm tired of this game. Everyone this game goes played in... for over a year. Yeah, no, I, I, I'm not planning to do that. I yeah. don't think it's something yeah. Amber would do, but to make it, to make things sensible, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna trust the, the GM here. Alright. I'm gonna fail the. I'm gonna fail yeah, the, yeah. Uh, let's let's go to the mindscape. Do yeah, I have to level up my woodcutting or my fire making first? To get the 99s. Alright, let's roll. Um. Alright. Dude, that's good, right? Uh, so I'm gonna move everybody's tokens. Are you all... basically having like an out of body experience right now? Basically, yeah. Uh... Damn, that's Damn. dope. Um. All right, so wait, did Athos resist? Uh, funny you should say that. You don't see Athos. It's kind of why I figured he wants us to distract it in the mindscape while he does something in the demi plane. Um. So let's see here. For now, it, it kind of. At the moment, it kind of like you're at a different spot. You are you like realize you're all standing close together again, but you at the moment it kind of looks like you're in the same like dome that you were in before. But you can definitely tell that something is different. Like you're not. You can kind of tell that you're not like you're in kind of a weird uh, dream state. Uh, Tiki, it's your turn now. Um. Okay. She falls asleep. Things are different. Yeah, you are in uh, you are in a mindscape now. Okay, I'm gonna drink my potion of all's wisdom. Well, a potion. I have two, but I'll drink one of them. Okay. Um, I'll tell Sally to take a total defensive stance. Uh, we are now in round two. Uh, Amber, it is your turn now. Uh, what do I know about Mindscapes? Uh, like, is this creature in the Mindscape... Uh, if I do things to this creature in the Mindscape, does it affect it in reality? Sort of. Same thing to uh, us. Yeah, it's the same as as with you. So, like, you know from what Athos told you as well, like, if if uh, she manages to kill you in the Mindscape, it's gonna, she's going to basically trap your soul in a Dreamstone. Um, and you could sort of do the same sort of thing. Like, if you, if you kill some, they're, like, if you kill this creature's dream body, it'll, it'll expel them from the Mindscape and, uh, it, potentially, you could do other things if you had like the options, but probably for you, it would just expel it from the dreamscape. It wouldn't affect it in its physical body at all. It sort of would, depending on what it was. Like physical damage on it, though. Like it'll it'll work the same way within the mindscape, I guess, basically, but. But what we do to it in the Mindscape, does it happen in real life? You're not sure. What happens in the Mindscape okay. sort of kind of happens in real life. I think this is a notion that Amber should be okay with, seeing as she uses shadow spells. Uh, 
What happens uh, in the I'm mindscape going stays in the mindscape? I'm going to cast invisibility, and uh, nobody can see me. Okay. Oh, first Athos and now Amber? They're just disappearing. Yeah, Amber just... What's going on? Amber just disappears. Uh, Razael, it's your turn. I, I probably see her cast invisibility, so whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm going to use a fervor charge to activate my sacred armor as a swift action and activate sacred weapon as a free action as a result of activating sacred armor as a swift action. All right. And then I'm going to move up and attack this thing. I'll use a uh, channel vigor for will save still cuz yeah, that seems like a good idea. So, I'll move like pretty close. Is that the square? I don't know. Yeah. Cuz I have daggers, so I am not that long of yeah. range. Um, unfortunately, that's 25 feet still, which I think my range is 20 feet. And so I'm just going to attack once, and I think I have a range penalty of something. Uh, yeah, minus four, I think. Alright, I'm not applying the minus four, so that'll apply after. So, uh, 22. 22 does not hit. It's 22, it's a good aligned weapon. Um, yeah, it's yeah. pretty low roll. So, you missed. It is. Alright, uh, Kale's turn now. Okay. Hmm. Fireball. Fireball? Fireball. Ding, ding, ding. Okay, uh, I'm guessing you can shoot it in such a way that it only hits uh, this thing. And the yeah. chains. And Free the chains. Yes. Which are still there, even in the mindscape. Technically um, damaging objects, if you really want to get down to it. What We're is the uh, free DC? The hag. Hold on, I I'm pretty sure it fails. 16. Okay, yep, it fails. Alright, I'll roll it. Can you overcome spell resistance? You gotta roll over spell resistance, yep. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Spell resistance is kind of the stupidest thing. Never want to play a caster again. <laughs> My... Chrome then you is have play a conjuration. VR where you can't get out of play a con you just need to play a Conjuration Specialist, and then... Okay, you do not overcome the spell resistance, so the Fireball doesn't do anything. It hits the chains. It hits the chains. does not seem to... Maybe the it. chains have spell resistance, too. <laughs> okay. We're pretty good at this you, game. Uh, do you move anywhere? No, I stick with the team. Okay. God damn it. Come chill with me. Rugar, what do you do? Hmm. I'm unsure if I should just go and, like, Charge. start fighting this thing like they are, or if I should be smart and wait and see what it does. Charge. I don't know. That's Good why I'm question. drinking potions. I'm going to hold my action until after its turn. Uh, drink your potion. Right. You bought one, didn't you? Um... Which one? All's wisdom. We think this thing does will stuff, right? Mind things. 
I don't think I did buy an L's Wisdom oh, okay. after all, because I already have an enhancement bonus to Wisdom. Oh, gotcha. Yeah, Tiki doesn't. <laughs> Alright, on its turn... Um... To start with, I need Razael to make a will save. Ha! Huh. It just activated my trap card. You can still roll 39. Yeah. How'd I yeah, do? I think you're I think you're fine. All right. So, <laughs> what ends up happening is is the environment around you starts flashing through uh various different scenes. Okay. And uh, it looks like a bog art from Raziel kind of realizes that these are these are it's all, it's flashing really fast, but he he realize, he recognizes them. It's it's his own memories, and they're flashing through. And it stops on one particular one. Um. So Ooh. let's see here. And you go on the other layer here. So he stops on one where he's in the middle of of a large uh, field. And uh. Out in out in the uh, and it's like there's a full moon out. It's the middle of the night, and. You see, uh, kind of crouched over and looking like it's ready to attack you, a very, very large lion. Do I recognize the lion? You As do. One of the creatures I've killed in my past. This is something that you killed in your past. Although it looks like this one is uh, much more ferocious than the one that you actually fought. What the hell is that? At least these guys know that I wasn't lying about being a monster hunter. Uh, well, I'm, do we see what he sees? Everyone sees this. Okay. Do you see what I see? Okay. Dope. This is Angel. <laughs> Don't worry, what you can do, I can also do. I have a plan to summon things, but it's not going to be as cool as a lion. Can we summon things into this plane? Sure, why not? Maybe? I assume uh, so. Because yeah. there's actually we'll so many rules when it comes to those things, but... And, uh... Well, it's the also going to... It's also going to do something else as well. Uh, Cackle. It's going to... No, it's... It actually can't make any noise. Yeah, it begins to cast a spell, uh, a silent spell, meta magic. Yumogwe by Vivi Zhao. A 43 spellcraft. That might identify it. Yeah, you can tell uh, that he's casting Hydraulic Push. Oh, my favorite! I love that spell. Oh, yeah, a little. Uh, that's actually doing us a favor. Push Raziel back into the group. Yeah. No, yeah, I can't uh, reach the freaking thing! Push. Raziel He's a draw like pushing so you guys towards it. I was gonna say, like, Zerdurim, you're walking your character <laughs> out in the middle of combat again. Again! Yeah, but this you time I'm this not on a I character not... who's gonna get, like, one shot. Oh, pfft, you say that now until it crits you. Yeah, you, you say that. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I have so many, like, high, like, my saves are so high, and this thing mainly does that kind of shit. Um, <laughs> let's see here. Plus, Brugar could have easily charged it. We need to keep, like, a score. Look how far away I am, characters. and I'm a dwarf. You have haste! Yeah, it actually rolled really low. Uh, see, so let's see here. Alright, not easily, be... but you can go 80, right? You might be okay. He's a dwarf. Yeah, 20 okay, for no, um, 40 for charge, and but 80 like, for haste. Remember 20, that situation? Does 28 beat your CMD, uh, Razael? Um, it actually hits it spot on, so yeah. So, yeah. Alright, he pushes you back 5 feet then, that's it. Ha, that <laughs> wouldn't have pushed me. You're a pansy. You're a pansy. <laughs> It's actually huge because I can't five foot step into range now. All right, it's Brugar's turn. So there's a giant uh, tiger over, or lion over here. Uh, yeah, and then there's also still this. 
That lion's beard is uh, probably better than Rugar's. I'm not gonna lie. Whoa. That doesn't count as a beard, it's a mane. Brugar feels no, threatened no, no. by the beard. But it definitely has a beard, too. Um, I tell Raziel to get back with the group. <laughs> God damn it. I don't know why we don't just kill this shit. I mean, you don't we don't know what it does! Listen to him. But I know well, what I do. If I the party's do. all gonna sit back and do nothing. Well, I'm not going up there because I'm tiki, but you know. Well, I don't want you to, but like, you know, Brugar easily could run up there and be the tank. Yeah, Brugar's a smart fighter. Yeah. So what are you, what are you doing, Brugar? Are you uh, gonna write an action? You gonna move? Um, and I'm, I'm moving up over here in front of Amber. And okay. I'm going to have a... I'm going to go full defensive. Total yeah, defense? I'll tell Razzle to get back with the group. Okay. Alright, Tiki, I'm it's the your shield turn now. of the group. You get behind me. Um, let's see. What's the range on that? Level 10. That's an additional 25. 50. Uh, how far am I? I'm still learning the new tools on this thing. Okay. Damn it. I have to get quite a bit closer. I'm gonna come up here. Fuck. I need at least two more squares for Okay. Okay. I'm gonna come up here and I'm gonna cast Wandering Star Motes on it. Hold on, Tiki. Remember this this big thing oh, can do uh... this. Oh. Don't let's not forget about this giant thing that looks yeah, like I a Yeah, I thought I can see that thing. Okay, never mind. We're we're gonna we're gonna hang out back here. Um <laughs> Alright. That thing showed up. Yeah, that's it's a little different story now. <sighs> yeah. And I mean I don't know what this like chain thing can do, but if this thing looks like a giant cat, I certainly have an idea of what this thing can do. Brugar knows <laughs> cats better than this chain thing. Yeah, it hasn't come back around to my turn yet, so I haven't identified the cat. But yeah, cats cats do things that... Uh... Zerdurian, I actually wouldn't be surprised if you die. What's the spell on this one? Really? But, but you know what the cool thing is? Is that um, you won't actually die. Oh, You'll just be you comatose in the dreamscape. What? How, how would I die? Cats are going to glitter dust the cat? The cat, yeah. Okay, that's a decent option. You're in range to I do got that, the right? Range for, yeah, it's medium. Um, so DC right, 17. We'll DC see. 17. I'll, I'll roll in the open for this. Fails it. Yay! Maybe Zerdarian won't die. Crisis perhaps averted. For now. Until it shakes it off. Where the hell is the blind icon that I normally use? There it is. It is blind. Alright. Uh, round three now. Um, it gets to go first because it rolled boss initiative. But it is blind, so it is going to um, move towards where it saw Razael. It is going to try to attack. Kitty the... angry. It's going to attempt to try to attack the. Now it does. It does a uh, a pounce, so it's going to do a full attack on Razael. Yep, I fucking knew it. Pouncey pounce. 
So, but his first blind. attack. It is blind, this is true. It's gonna do his first attack. So... But, 31 hit. Isn't, which means it Yeah. Well, that's it does not hit through concealment, hit. though. It's gonna do another attack. Another 31. This one also gets blocked by... It's See, blindness. guys, what are you worried about? It's also going to attempt to saving your ass bite right you. Now. It managed Shit. to hit the bite you uh, on stupid. you, so now it's now it's going to attempt to try to grab you. This is a stupid cat. Does uh, thirty-eight beat your CMD? Yeah, yeah, we discussed this earlier. It's twenty-eight. All right, you're you're now grappled. It has it has grappled you. Uh, it's going to try to see if it's still. It is no longer Aww. blind. <laughs> they can see and taste its prey. Does it do bite damage? No, oh, it does bite damage as well. Whoops. So it missed its claws? Is that what happened? It missed yeah, its, it claws its claws because of the blind, but it hit with its bite. Okay. Uh, you take 22 damage. Damn. Discard I thought my HE was good, but you're throwing this crap at us. Alright, Amber, it's your turn. Uh, I want to knowledge of this thing. Okay, knowledge nature. The lion or the hag? The, the lion. Does a 20 knowledge it? Uh, it actually meets. So you know that it is just a, a very large, uh, larger than normal dire uh, lion. It's a large dire lion? Yeah, well, it's huge, technically. Like, normally a dire lion is large. This is a huge dire lion, basically. No, no, but, yeah, a, a yeah, large, large template dire lion. Effectively, yes. Okay. Uh, yep, that's that's a big cat. Um, I'm gonna cast Shadow Conjuration. Okay. And I am summoning a Lantern Archon. Now your invisibility is just regular. Oh, no, I guess you're summoning. Okay, that works. So that'll keep your invisibility then. Uh, yep. Summoning a lantern archon. All right, you begin summoning a lantern archon. Uh, Razael, it's okay. your turn. Or and I believe that else. lantern archon is now summoned. Oh yeah, it is because it's standard action for you because it's shadow conjuration. Uh, do we have a lantern archon token? I don't know if we do or not. Just type it no, into no, no, the search thing. Does it pull anything up? I know it'll turn up lantern, but those well, are like actual lanterns. Well, it searches lantern. Roll20 and Google, so it actually... That'll be fine. The lantern. lantern is fine. And I'm summoning it into uh, this square. And it's going to make two touch attacks on uh, this guy. Controlled by Mantis. Alright, go ahead and you can... Do either of those hit a to touch AC? So it's going to move up here? No, 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 no. It's, it's ranged touch attacks. Ranged touch attacks, okay. Uh, neither of those hit its touch AC, though. Darn. Uh, that, that... Uh, I you think... move anywhere? Yeah, I'll move, uh, over here. Okay. Um, it is now Razai's turn, so you are grappled, but you can still do things. Yeah, this is If you want to try to cast a spell, you're going to have to make a concentration check. The no, DC no, no, is going to no, be based on its grapple. I used all my spells. Oh, okay. Uh, you can um, still attack. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to do that. You can still attack. Um, I don't as think as I can break free. one-handed with weapons, but... I'm going yeah, to one-handed attack. I could, but I'm going to one-hand attack it with my dagger. Okay. My adamantine one. And I can actually full round it as well you to can. get three attacks. You can. You can full round it. Yep. So I'm you going to full round attack dagger it. Too. No, I can only do one-handed moves while grappled. Yeah, but they're they're both one-handed. Yeah, you can do right, two separate but... one-handed. Wait, I can, can do two full round with 
So I can do five yeah, attacks. Can... Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. And, oh god, oh god, oh my god, I have to make this melee? Yeah, okay, I'm just gonna switch. It's melee, mm -hmm. and we're gonna hope the numbers are penalty. right. You have a minus four to dex and a minus two penalty on your tax. Yeah, don't forget to okay. put the grapple condition on if so, it's not already on. Hang on. Grappled. And I'm no longer doing deadly aim. I'm no longer doing point blank shot. And I am going to do channel vigor on uh, spirit still. And yeah, I'm just gonna attack. I think these numbers are right, but I won't make any guarantees. Anytime you make me attack melee, there's no guarantees. Um. Well, assuming that those numbers are correct, um, it looks like. Every single one of those <laughs> attacks hits. The 18 hit? Yes. The 18 hit. Sorry, these, these well. don't have the minus 2 from being grappled. They do have the uh, grapple. So well, wait, it has a grappled condition. It has a grappled condition. Does that do the it minus does? 2 on attack? Uh, okay, if it does, I if the chief does it, then we're good. I assume it does. Uh, uh, I would right. assume. Yeah, condition minus 2. Yeah, yeah it's there. So I did melee. See, managed, so. He managed to take it out. Keep in mind, if it's an evil outsider, he gets nauseated as well. Also, keep in mind, I have a good aligned weapon uh, on the adamantine. It's it's a tiger, or it's a lion rather. It's it's a cat. Is this oh an yeah, evil it's not an outsider. Or count okay. as evil? <laughs> the cat? Yeah. No, it's it's a cat. Also, a since I crit, he's shaken for one round without any save. Okay, he is shaken then, uh, and he is he is still up, but he looks very bad. Looks like he very badly tore him up. I just like you see me just like swinging both my daggers while he's like jumping on me, and I'm just like cutting at his neck and face. And, yeah, like you've never no, seen blind... someone fight so ferociously. Yeah, the Tiki's blind save blind was yeah. really, really clutch <laughs> because this thing is basically just a glass cannon. Oh my god, I didn't realize it was. I I don't know. I forget that we're only level ten in this game, and oh yeah, yeah. I was like, oh yeah, I have like two hundred health. You know, we have like bears endurance. It's like, no, I have eighty health. I don't know how many times <laughs> we warn you, and you're just like, meh, meh. At the same fine. time, if Brugar went forward, we were fine. I don't know why we don't just we have we uh, all have haste. Well, we can maybe. all move forward. If he if he went forward, then maybe it pounces down here after like somebody else. Right. Yeah, then it gets one of the casters. So Brugar's a suggestion to you. I guess if it's we that don't smart. Know what it does, let's see, and you know, bunker up basically. Yeah, I mean, yeah you don't know what nice it, you don't know, actually know what it, what you know, it nice does. You know, after I do my turn that we say that. <laughs> uh, it's not than, turn. you know when I start moving. Yeah. So, what do you do, Kale? We'll save you. I'll save you. Tiki will save you. Um, uh, just, it seems dumb. Like, is, are, is the lion really going to charge at the casters when Brugar runs up and hits it with a hammer? It's your... Maybe. Memory. Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I it's mean, a dumb lion. <laughs> it's a dumb lion. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows well, what it will do? I mean, I know, I, I know I what it would have done. Almost one shot it, <laughs> but that's that's the thing is you don't know what it would what it would have done. Uh, yeah. Also, Zerdurium, uh, my fighter is strongest when things come to it. Me going yeah. in and uh, charging I'm stuff is a bad Brugar. like, it's a bad idea for me. What are you doing? Okay. Delay after. What's Brugar. Kale doing? You're delaying your initiative. Okay. Kale delays his initiative to after Brugar. Uh, on its turn, it is going to uh, cast a spell. And Raziel can make another will save. Uh, I it hasn't learned its lesson yet? Okay. Uh, let's see if I can find out. 
Samesies? Oh, wrong, wrong thing. Okay, uh... That's Spellcraft. I probably don't know anything, but I got rid of a low roll. That's we'll scary. save. save. <laughs> you failed. <laughs> oh, man. This right. game, man. Razael, you are staggered next round. Oh. As... I'm just gonna go to bed. Worst things could happen. The, uh, the lion is still there, but your uh, memories are still kind of uh, flashing around. Uh, like, the, the landscape is... is Quickly, What's the like, check for staggered? Line. Staggered just means you can only take a standard oh, no, action there it is. turn. I, I had to show it all conditions. conditions. Yeah, it doesn't actually affect anything on your character sheet, I don't think. Okay. So, only standard action. Got it. And uh, in this case, you see a couple of stone giants that you remember fighting. Wait, there's more shit coming? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just remember that last time I fought this lion, the thing I did is I wrestled with it. And once it was on top of me, I could easily get hits onto it. Yeah, pretty much how it's going now. Going now might have been how you how you beat it last time. Too. Yeah, that's why I went for it. Um, that's it why I casting... let it grapple me. Amber identifies it as casting a uh, still spell, but it is casting um, is casting a spell called. Uh... Um, where is this at here? A spell called Terror. So it shoots out a... It's going to attempt to do a ranged... Uh, like an, a ray shoots out from its uh, chained up claw. And it's going to shoot at... Um, let's see, who's in range here? Yep, I think everyone's in range. So it's going to shoot it at uh, Kale. Oh no. So, Kale has mirror images though, I believe. Yeah. So first off, it's gonna do its ranged attack. Uh, I'm just gonna roll that here. Uh, it hits your range. Touch AC. How many images do you have? Six. Six images. So it's gonna roll a D. It takes out one of your images. Terror uh, is a ranged attack. If it hits someone, and they make a, it can either make them panicked, or if they make a will save, then they're just shaken. If they succeed this, the save. That's pretty nasty. Um, and that's its turn. Uh, I need to roll the. Sorry, I need to roll initiatives for these two giants that just showed up. Uh, I think it's going to be their, I think their initiative bonus is pretty shit. Uh, well, one of them rolled really high, really high anyway. Um, and then... I'm just going to sort. And then scroll back down to where we were. All right, it's Brugar's turn now. So you see, there's right. a couple of stone giants now, and this is kind I of hear. the train's change. It's a, it's, it's a, uh, you're uh, now kind of a bit like a, uh, well, it looks like the Storval Plateau. I don't see Amber, right? She's invisible. Right. You do not see Amber. That's, that's correct. correct. Okay. Then and I'm, I'm gonna move up to this big cat thing. Okay. And, hmm, do I power attack it, or do I just, do I trip it? It does look critically injured right now. If that informs your decision any. 
Because I only get one attack. Still, yep. It is still grappling, uh... Razael. I think... I guess I'll try and down it. Alright. So I'll power attack... with my Warhammer. That is enough to take out the cat. It releases, lets out a loud yowl, and then kind of fades away. Back into I tell, the. Uh, I tell ether. Raziel to like uh, to to get behind me, and I I tell the others to also like get behind me. All right, Kale's turn. There are two giants and uh, this thing that just tried to shoot a ray at you. Um, I'm going to fireball to hit all three of them. Can you do that? Let's I see think... here. What? Oh, that's 40 than I thought it was. Or is it 20? It's, 20 it's foot a 20 radius. foot radius, so no. You, yeah, can, you get can hit the two giants. The giants. Yeah, or you can get giants. one of the giants and hit. Hit the two giants? Okay. Two giants. Alright, uh, the giants do not have spell resistance, luckily, so you don't have to worry about that. And then they'll just roll a reflex save. Uh, it's a 16, right? So they yeah. both fail. And they'll both take that full 25 damage then. All right, and then I move up behind Brugar. Okay. Uh, Tiki, it's your turn now. Oh gosh. Okay. Um. I'll tell Sally to move up and keep up with everybody. Uh, so we're gonna come up here, yeah. and then. I guess I should do that on the GM layer, so you guys can't see my arrows. <laughs> He's plotting. I gotta be sneaky about this. No. <laughs> so what are you doing? Up. Uh, I'm gonna start. Okay, I'm gonna have to make a ride check because I'm gonna summon while Sally's moving. Okay. I succeed. Okay. Um. So I'm casting a spell, and it, it's a summon, so I won't have it until next round. Wait, why is it a ride check? So or Sally, a or... I think it's a caster roll check. Uh, concentration. Like concentration, concentration, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you're fine. Um, all right. We're now in round four. Amber, it is your turn now. Uh, I'm gonna have my lantern. Uh, move up out of the way of these giants, 60 feet. Okay. You have control of the lantern, uh, you can move it. Yeah, um, actually not quite 60 feet. It's going to be, like, pretty much 30 feet up in the air over this thing. Uh, 30 feet up in the air over it. Okay, that's fine. And uh, it's going to make a ray attack. All right, who's it shooting at? Uh, th this thing. Okay, it misses. Yeah, I thought so. Um. So touch AC was a little bit lower this turn than it was the turn before. For reasons. Um, let's see.
I think I'll move uh, 35 feet or 30 feet up into the air and a little bit over. Uh, I have my height in my red box, by the way. If you click on my token. And I am going to cast Mirror okay. Image. Alright, you cast Mirror Image. Uh, it looks like I have, what, like five images? Oh, uh, and can I tell if this is a binary or immersive mindscape? Uh, I recognize those words. Give me a second to figure figure that out real fast. These are words that I know. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's immersive, if I remember right. Yeah, this is an immersive mindscape. Okay. Do anything else? Uh, nope. nope. Okay. Let's see. This giant on its turn, it is going to. Uh, whoops, that is the wrong button. No thanks. I do not want Fog of War on. That was not what I was trying to do at all. Uh, on its turn, this thing is going to... Can it get to anybody? I can if it charges. So, it is going to charge at Tiki. Yeah. So, it runs over towards Tiki. Oh, no. It is going to... It has a great club. It's going to lift its massive club up in the air and try to bring it down on Tiki. Okay. Um, so, let's see here. Let me turn my mounted thing on. Okay. Does a 17 hit Tiki? No. It misses. Yeah. Why is my AC so high? Oh yeah, all the spells. Razel, you are reeling a little bit in uh, from the from seeing all this, all these these memories coming flashing around you. Uh, this time, you're not able to uh, you weren't able to resist the effect, and you are you are staggered this round. So you can take a single move or standard action, but not both. You cannot full attack. You can still do one mm. attack though, if you want. You can five foot. Am I still prone from being grappled? Uh, no, you never. You were I never prone? prone. I was never prone. You were. You were never prone. All right, I'm going to. Ooh. If you continued being grappled by it, it might have made you prone. The next yeah. round. But... I forgot to use this channel vigor. What am I supposed to do with that? I don't know. When you cast a spell, choose one of the following portions. Wait, am I looking at the right thing? What did you- Sure, let's- I'll scroll up and look for it. I'm going to cast Bestow Curse. Wait, that's a touch. Never mind, I'm not casting that. I'll cast, uh... Is this really worth it? Was that right there? Sure, I'll cast this spell on myself. Nothing better to do. Really? Really? All right, you heal yourself. Do you do Point anything? Two. Five foot step. Okay. Any swift action? I'm actually up to exactly full health now. I'm going to five foot step back. Okay. And that's round uh, three for my sacred stuff. Yep. Uh, on this the giant's turn, he is going to... Does he even have to charge? He might be able to just move like normal. No, he still has to charge, it looks like. Uh, he's going to charge at... 
He's gonna charge at Razal. So he reaches up with his great club and he tries to bring it down on you. This is personal you. Should take into all defense, damn it. Oh, I actually had the wrong bonuses. I would have missed anyway, though. Uh, the one on Tiki. I was using the wrong, the wrong bonuses. Request uh, there's a 29. Quick. Hit Rezael. Yeah, what's your question? Zerdurium, you said you can <sighs> channel Vigor on people, and that's a personal spell, so... What? Did that? Uh... I thought that was everyone. Maybe it's it just me. It says personal range target you. So that's why I was confused on where this random spell's coming from, and I was reading it, and it's like, when you cast a spell, oh. you choose portions of yourself. Oops. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I just Alright, so does a 29 hit Raziel's AC? Sorry. I thought it was the other spell that affects the party. Blessing of I got the I'm looking, I'm looking. looking. Uh, yeah, it hits. Um, you take 30 damage. Slams I think I just healed myself. a great club down into you. <laughs> Although if I took a total defense, it wouldn't have hit, so that would have been better. But hindsight. Let's see, on this thing's turn, what is it going to do here? It is going to... It is going to cast a spell on... Uh, you can go ahead and roll Spellcraft. Amber knows it is casting a spell called... Apparent Treachery. Mm. <clears throat> I'm not even sure I can see So you it. know... Apparent Treachery causes... Uh, creatures to no longer be able to consider each other allies mm -hmm. if they fail the will save. It also causes them to take attack opportunities against each other. It's, uh, oh dang. Everybody, uh, let's see, Amber is not getting affected by it, but it's affecting, um, and I guess if uh, your familiar is actually down here, I don't know what your familiar is, but if your familiar is down there, it's not getting affected. So it's going to affect everybody else otherwise though. Uh, so, Brugar, Kale, Razael, Tiki, and Sally, actually, need to all make a will save. Is it will negate? No, not Sally. Uh, it is, actually. Not that I need to tell you that. Okay, let me make sure that my oh. numbers are correct. Well, I mean, if we, I guess I, I mean, if we spellcrafted it. You don't identify the spell. Amber would know that, but... I didn't. Okay. Amber's right. like, everyone, you need to save or else it'll control so, you. <laughs> uh, I still need one from Brugar, then. Wait, is this not like yeah. a mind effect thing that we're immune to because of Magic okay. Circle, if we're in Magic Circle against evil, or protection from evil? No, it, no. Yeah, it's not That's... a possession effect. Tiki okay. makes a save. Sally does not. Um, Brugar. And yeah, the plus two versus spells uh, counts as a spell. Sally... It does is, count as a spell, so yeah, you make the save then. Uh, the creature casting is evil, Sally gets so I guess Sally would get the, the plus circle. two then. Yeah. She makes it then, so it looks like everybody yeah. made it except for Amber Kale. didn't roll. Kale. Amber is not affected by it. Oh, it has to a, specifically target. Yeah, special so person. She just can't be targeted because it doesn't it doesn't see her. Nope. Nope. So this, yep, it hits. Uh, so Kale. Kale now does not consider anybody to be an ally. And, uh, Brugar, it's your turn. You can roll a sense motive if you want to see if you know that, uh, Kale is affected by that effect, but... Okay. Yeah, you can tell. You can tell there's something off with, uh, with Kale, and maybe you can tell that if you try to, like, move past him, he's gonna, it's gonna, like, he'll, he's forced to take attack opportunities against you, basically. If you provoke, hmm. so strange. Something to be aware of. That's that's pretty much all this really does. It also does some other stuff like prevents well, you from flanking. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over here. All right. So you provoke from from uh, Kale then. Yeah. And from, from the, the giant. Why is Kale's health bigger than his bar? Mm. 
He probably has some temporary hit points, is my guess. So, Kale, you are forced to take an attack opportunity against Brugar. Does a 23 hit Brugar? I don't think it does. No. Yay. Uh, and the Stone Giant's gonna take his attack. I know you have, like, bonus AC versus, so it's probably pretty unlikely to hit. Um, but it's gonna take its attack all the same with a Great Club. Does a 30 hit Brugar. Defensive right. draining puts me at plus four versus giants, so that's thirty-four. Nice. So it misses. All right. And then uh, what do you do? I'm going to try and uh, trip it. Okay. Here comes a trip. The mighty Brugger trip. Oh, it's a low roll. It's a oh. Trip. Yep, it does not trip it. <laughs> that two. It almost did, actually, but it, it doesn't. Actually, no, wait. Char it charged. It trips. Nice. Nice. You were no. close enough that the fact that Slightly it charged off -balance. actually mattered. So, yeah, it is now tripped. It's prone. Nice. Alright. It used its momentum. And got it in the ankle. So, Kale, you are not uh, actually like required to go and attack these guys, even though, like, you're you have like, these weird like delusions of paranoia. So, like, you can't. You're jumpy, and if if you know that if you, if you stay near them, you might like lash out at them. But you are rational enough to realize that you're being affected like this. So, you can still act as normal. Just be aware, you cannot get flanking bonuses from any allies, and if you stay near people, you're gonna have to take attack opportunities against them. Okay. Um... I can zoom in now that we're kind of limited on the battlefield. Um... I'm going to move by Tiki. Uh, you're gonna move over by Tiki. Well, you said act as normal, right? Well, yeah, you can act. Uh, I'm saying this. This effect's gonna stay up though for a while. Like you, you know that if you end your turn next to somebody and they do something that's provokes, you're gonna you're gonna have to take that attack opportunity. Uh, I guess I can move here then. All right. Yeah, uh, that when you yeah. move. <laughs> As you move I up there, I have to it's... attack someone. Let me move next to Tiki. No. <laughs> yeah, I was like, that seems like a strange choice, but all right. Uh, this thing's gonna try to attack you as you move up to. All right. Uh. Does a twenty-four hit your AC? No. Not okay. Fan. Is it within four of your of your AC? So, in other words, it was a break yeah. an image. Okay, so breaks one of your images then. Uh, but you're up next to it now. All right. So what do you do? I attacketh. Okay. And you miss. Wow, wow. Alright, Tiki, uh, what do you summon again? I don't know if you told me yet. Um. Gosh, I actually didn't even think about that. Uh. What did. A lion. Lion. What? I already have a token for it if you want to summon a lion. Celestial I line. I'll we'll just throw the same token down. Beard. No, well. No. Alright, don't summon one of those then. No. Uh, let's see. Let's you can summon do... a shark, I'll bring this this one back out. What's up, guys? Let's do a Cyclops. A Cyclops. Alright, I don't know if I have. Uh... Oh, yeah, it's Nature's Alley. Anyway. Oh, the Cyclops cheese! It's back again! Yay! <laughs> oh, I have the Cyclops helmet. I'm gonna use that crap. Free nat twenty. Um, it's true. You could have like used it to not get hit by that one save earlier. Do I have a Cyclops token? Yeah, well, I had to roll a one. And it's not finding one off the web very easily. All right. Well, you have a Cyclops summoned. Uh, I'm just gonna draw a square for a moment. I can draw it. Get one in there. 
How big is it? Um, I'm Cyclopses summon are it large creatures, right? On the right? other side of, uh, yeah, it's large. I'm gonna summon on the corner of um, a kale to get a flank. Uh, so it won't a... get a flank. Oh, it won't get a flank. Oh, because of his effect. Yeah, kale can't because of the okay. effect that's on him. She Over here might be that, useful. But I'm gonna then. summon there anyways. Um, I didn't okay. add okay. the bonus, so those numbers are correct. Isn't that a good Cyclops? It's you look so with happy. It's a great axe with its reach. So it's gonna be, uh... Oh, it's gonna be one away. Yeah. I gotta yeah, select getting, the whole thing. One uploaded. God It's dang. where the box is, I put. Yeah, I'm trying to move the whole thing at once. It's, it's tough, because it doesn't let you have it as, like, It's multiple. different parts. I have to select the whole thing, yeah. Did All you guys right. know there's Thursday Night Football on Twitch? Yeah. I did know that, yeah. All right, I haven't watched there a football is. game in, like, years. But you might you might do it now that it's on but Twitch. I started watching one because it's on Twitch. So did it oh, it's on right now, isn't it? Hit? And if yeah, so, yeah, that's why I was saying it. Both attacks. Uh, okay, so let's see here. Both of those are going to hit. On the stone giant, I believe. So she's just a charged. Yeah, so those both hit. I just and, the uh. Whoops. Uh, you I'll had give control you of it. Weird. I'll give okay. you another one. I did give you control of it. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> oh, okay. I'm gonna give you control of it again. Because it's gonna be around for 10 please. rounds. So. Unless it gets, like, killed or something. Uh, so let's see. It hits twice, um, on the cyclops and does some damage. To the Cyclops. Wait, it does damage to the Cyclops or does or damage to the, to the giant? The giant. Okay. The Cyclops does damage to the giant uh, and is now much more badly injured. Oh, I forgot to power attack. And uh, it's fine. You can do it next time. Uh, it's your turn, though. What do you What do you specifically do? Right. Um. So now I'm going to cast Wandering Star Motes on. Uh, let's. Start with the Cyclops. Are you going to cast defensively? To me. No, I'm going to have Sally move. Stop. Then I'll cast. Okay. Well, it doesn't have combat reflexes anyway, so. Oh, goody. It's fine. My AC is pretty good. That armor I bought for myself. Yeah. Is nice. So, Wandering Star Mote's on it. It needs to make a will save? Yeah, here's the thing. I'll go ahead and roll their will saves out in the open here. Uh, DC 19, so it makes it. It's going to jump to the next one, right? Yep. Which, I don't know if Kale that one fails. counts as the next one or not in this situation. It does not, since oh, you're the one that cast it. Okay. <laughs> it would actually have Kale had cast it, probably. Uh, oh, funny. Because even though he knows that, like, he knows he's suffering, like, from, like, kind of a weird delusion, and he's going to compulsively do it, he kind of, it's not affecting him such that he can't, like, it's not like it's actually, like, a dominate effect in this case. It's kind of a weird effect, I know, but. Alright, we're in, uh, round five now. Amber, what do you do? Um, how do, uh... How do negative levels affect things in Mindscapes? Uh, just like normal. Uh, I am going to ready an action to uh, use Enervate on this thing uh, as it begins to do something on its turn. Okay. And Seems I'm going to have this thing, this thing uh, attack it twice. Okay, so it's going to have its own initiative that's different than yours, then, if your ready to action gets triggered. So we'll go ahead and add its own turn thing on here. Oh, it maybe hits! Uh, I think that might. Let me check. Yeah, that this hits. This is against Touch AC. Yep, since it's against Touch AC, that hits. Uh, I'm guessing the 9 doesn't. The 9 does not, but 17 hits, though. 
What does it do? It does some damage or something? It does a D6 of uh, immune to spell resistance damages. Or immune to DR damages. I guess this thing gets to make a will save of DC 22 to see if it believes it's real or not. Uh, yeah, it doesn't believe it's real, so it's going to take a quarter of that damage, right? Yeah. It takes so a quarter take... of two, so it takes one damage. Yeah, one damage. Worth it. Hey, hey. I'm, I'm hurting it. I think you've ba effectively done six damage to it, so it's pretty good. You've done the most damage to it. Uh, I'm not going to tell you how much hit points it has, but yeah, it's a good job is what I'll say. It's more than six. Um, we know it's more than six. We know it's more than six. <laughs> That's fair. <laughs> uh, Alright, so Amber is ready in an action. So and your initiative is... Oh, what did I just do? Oh, I just dragged you down. Okay, to right before it. Perfect. Because that's it's going to ready. It's gonna get its ready. You're gonna get your ready to action. Um, on this thing's turn, it is mm, going to attack at at uh, Kale, I believe. Yeah, that's what's gonna do. So it's gonna turn towards Kale and it's gonna try to swing at you with its. Grip. So first attack. This is a twenty-three hit. No. Does it get within four? No. Okay, doesn't break an image either then. Uh, it's going to do one more attack at uh, minus 5 to that. 26? No. Is it within 5? Yeah. So it breaks an image. Uh, and it's going to move out of the apparent flank even though it isn't actually flanked. Um, but it doesn't know that. Uh, it is now Razael's turn. Oh you boy, no our staggered. favorite war priest. Um, I'm going to five foot step down here and full round this lower guy down here. Okay. Let's see. And you I have precise shot. Uncheck. Staggered and grappled. I need to recheck. Deadly aim. And point blank. And I'm pretty sure I have precise. Let me double check because I never remember what my characters do. I do have precise shot. Okay, so I'm throwing my daggers and they're bouncing back, and I'm throwing them and they're bouncing back. And I do... Oh, these are ranged, not melee anymore. Okay, we're ready. Oh, baby. <laughs> this character is so good. Well, you got two crits here, it looks like. Uh, yeah, this thing's dead. Kill it. All my attacks are over 30. Um, I think you kill it on the first attack, so do you move your other attacks over to the other one? Yes, of course. Um, so let's see, this guy is on the ground, so he does get a little bit he of bonus plus AC. Four. But even still, your attacks are above 30, so I think they all hit. Um... So, let's start. I think you're going to take this guy out as well. I, I'm, I remember finding these things. I know exactly yeah. how tough they are. I'm like, this dagger, this throw, will kill it. And I throw it, and it kills it. And I take my other ones, and I'm like, now it's your turn. Or my other one, and then that one bounces back, and I throw it at the other one. It's like, this is going to kill this one, too. Alright. Uh is now going to trigger so first off it's going to it's going to trigger ready to action in a moment but before that i need brugar to make a will save for me okay i'll say also after that turn i'll say this was easier than the first time is that all you got you filthy hag
Uh, Alright, you're fine. You are... But what ends up happening is the uh, mindscape around you starts to fluctuate, and it starts to look now in places... It looks like... Uh, places from Brugar's past. You're seeing basically uh, the cityscape of like the, the Five Kings Mountains. And... Uh, Karmagabar? Karmagabar? No. Eventually sees... Um, what he sees is a. Oops, I need to go on the other layer here. He's in an. You're in an area where there are a whole bunch um, of other dwarves around you, and they're all kind of um, grouped together. And Brugar would probably remember this as some sort of assembly at from his academy days. Um, probably this would be something like the. Uh, like a ceremony during during his time there it wasn't maybe specifically for his class, but for like maybe the um, the class like a uh, the seniors graduating kind of thing and the end of the mm-hmm. end of the year kind of ceremony thing. But it ends up being different than you remember, as all of the the entire mass of all these dwarves all kind of turn all at once with uh, oh god deadly intent. Deadly grins so, on their faces. Let's go. Hidden beneath going their bring big the beards. Dwarves. There's gonna be a horde of dwarves. There's gonna be a lot of them. Wait, is this it? is gonna be. This is gonna be basically, effectively, you're gonna be fighting a bunch of people with a bunch of things with the troop subtype. Cool. Holy shit! This is a lot of dwarves. Yeah, there's a ton of them. Don't worry, this this looks like the inverse law of uh, ninjas at work. <laughs> um, I'm going to go add a whole bunch of these guys to the turn tracker, so this will take a second. So we should be all right. Uh, it's going to begin casting a spell as well, which is going to trigger your ready to action. Go ahead and roll spellcraft as well if you want to identify it before you do that. But. Holy shit! That's a lot of dwarves. Mm-hmm. And these are like uh, troop subtypes, so they're like, this is like each group of like eight dwarves. So they're swarms of dwarves. They're swarms of dwarves, yeah. effectively. But they're not yeah. swarms in the way that I can't hit them with my normal attacks. That is correct, because they are swarms of medium creatures. So basically, they're troop. Um, yeah, they're, they're the troop type. It, they work kind of similar to swarms in that if you end your turn like next to them, they just automatically do some damage to you, uh, which is pretty scary. But uh, if you hit them, you can hit them with normal damage, and also they take increased damage from AoE effects, if you have any of those. Um, because you're hitting multiple creatures with them. But yeah, otherwise they're not they're not like a swarm in the sense that they're immune to weapon damage, thankfully for you, because I know you rely a lot on weapon damage. Yeah, I have one or two things I can do that aren't mad or aren't weapon based, but yeah. So let's see. I think I need to add these ones still, and I gotta add these ones as well. All right, let's go through and roll some. Why not just have them all move at once? That's true. I could just because them later that would initiative. kind of wreck us. You know, I'll... I think that's simpler. I'll just pretend. I'll just say like they delay their initiative. They're not going to go until uh, they're going to go basically just before. Um... So let's see here. I need to change Amber's initiative down to uh, uh, twelve. Twelve, I guess. Twelve will work. So these guys are going to have an initiative of eleven point five. They're all delayed, basically. So you're going to have a full turn before you have to deal with these guys again. Um, that'll make things a lot simpler. Um, and you know that it is casting... Uh, it's casting a spell called Steel Breath. Ooh. Oh, I go definitely want to interrupt this one. Yeah, go for it. You're going to break your invisibility doing this, obviously, but... Yeah, I understand. 
Um, so yeah, I guess I'm going to make a ranged touch attack on it. Does that hit? Hits his touch AC. Does that overcome spell resistance? Does not overcome spell resistance. Shit. Uh oh. And it shoots. Uh. Razel, you need to make a fortitude save. It's trying to steal your breath. Fortitude save is my middle name. Wait, steel breath isn't suffocate. No. Twenty-four. All right, you're fine. Nothing happens. You said right. I pass. Yeah, and you. Yep, you pass. Nothing happens. Okay, so it's fine. Dope. Um. Wait, what happened? How is it right it's now? Brugar's it's turn right now. now. It should be Brugar's turn. Um, Brugar, it's your turn now. I think because I resorted it messed things up. <laughs> so, Brugar, you see a bunch of these dwarves. Uh, you recognize several of them as being former classmates of you, but of course they uh, are acting different. Um, but since you passed your, your will save, you're able to, like, you're not staggered or anything. You're able to act as normal. And you know that these are not okay. actually your classmates. They look like them, but they're... It's, it's, it's all just a figment of They're not as classy. Come Correct. To it's a figment of your imagination come to life. Oh, boy. Well, I tell everyone to bunker up and... Uh, you know... Fight... I'm gonna move over here and uh, ready in action to attack the first uh, bunch of dwarves that come within my uh, my reach. All right, uh, Kale, what do you do? Oh, that's a good question. I cast Obscuring Mist. Obscuring Mist. Interesting. Oh okay. boy. What what a great spell for someone who throws daggers to deal with. <laughs> Where are you casting hey, Obscuring Mist? Hey, you're not mist? his ally. That's true, I'm not his ally. Go ahead and go ahead and draw um, your Obscuring Mist. I only it's from your 20. Obscuring Mist is 20 feet from actually where you're located actually, isn't it? Like it's yeah, it comes from where you. Uh... Yeah, it's centered around you. Yeah, it's centered around you. Yeah, so it's. Uh... Let's see here. I'll just summon a wind elemental. Tornado wit. No. Something like that, but with. Not as thick of lines. <laughs> is it doesn't matter. Thick. We can't see anyways with it. At least some of them. All right, so everybody's in an obscuring mist now. Uh, well, Amber's probably above it. Um, yeah. Um. All right, do you move anywhere? I fly up. Are in you the doing air. that as part of a spell combat? You fly up in the air. How high up do you fly? Um, just above the cloud. Just above feet. the cloud. All right. Or 25 feet, I guess. I'm going to put a 20 in your red circle there for your height. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. all right, Tiki, it's your turn. You're in a mist now. You can yes. see out of it, though. Yeah. There's a bunch of dwarves over here. Okay, I'm going to have the Cyclops five foot step. And let's see. Full attack. What's his bab? It's seven, so we're at a minus. 
minus two, two plus, plus six. This is a great axe, so it's plus six, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, so let me see if I still have those things configured. Oh, probably not. Yeah. Ooh, chance for critical. Yeah. I can't remember if troop traits, if troops are immune to crits. I don't think they are. They are immune to flanking, I know, and precision damage. But... So, like, if you hit I one, do you hit all of them or just one of them? Oh. You're all of them. You're kind of hitting like all of them. It's like you're hitting yeah. a couple okay. of them, so, but there's so many of them. That you they swing your axe down. and you're hitting so many. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, so he does not confirm his crit against the uh, against the swarm, against the dwarf swarm, but he does hit it and he does a bunch of damage to it. Uh, does my wandering star motes wander after something dies or goes away? Uh. Uh, I assume it does. Who did After that... it dies, it goes away. It goes away. Or it does it just go away? Dang. Okay. It only jumps if something saves. Uh -huh. Okay, so yeah, this Wandering Star Mutts are gone now then. Okay. Um, where I am, I don't... I can't really see, because there's mist. Um, so I'm going to cast Shield of Fortification on myself. Okay. Do you move anywhere? Uh, no, nope. We're gonna take advantage of this this cloud. Okay. We're now in round six. Uh, Lantern Archon's turn. This is on a different initiative than Amber now. Ooh. Could have a delay, I suppose, if you want to get him back on the same. It deals a damage. It deals one damage to this thing, I'm guessing, right? Yep. Chipping I'm away still the at only it. one who's dealt damage to this guy. This guy. <laughs> uh, Razael, it's your turn. You have a bunch of fog in your way. Yep. You can move out of it if you want, though. I'm going to... <sighs> I'm going to drop the sacred weapon and sacred armor. Okay. And I'm going to like you're not going to maintain the buff, you mean, right? Right. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna. Okay. I can drop it as a free action. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Stop using the buff. Yep. I'm going to instead cast Zephyr's gift. On my adamantine dagger, which is a domain power for the okay. air domain, which actually, I let me scratch that. I'm going to cast my level 10 uh, air domain power, which gives me the ability to fly for one minute. Okay. Uh, do you fly anywhere then? I get a fly speed of 60 feet, average maneuverability, fly. Skill check you bonus have a fly equal speed to my of level ninety because uh, of your haste as well. Okay. Haste. haste if I succeed at a charge attack while flying, which I won't do, then I do extra stuff. But that's neat. Um, how high does this obscuring mist go? Do I know, or do I just look up and I see it? It's a twenty foot radius, so I mean, you're close. Right, I'm just to gonna the fly up it, until I probably... get to the outside of it. Okay. I mean, you probably only have to fly up like. 10 feet from where you're at because you're on the outside of it to get out of yeah. it. So, yeah. so I'll, I'll fly up like 10 feet. I'll put you out as flying 10 feet up in the air. And then I'm going to attack this close dwarf troop swarm thing oh, okay. with my adamantine dagger. Wait, didn't you just use a standard action to give yourself the fly speed or is that like a sword yep. action? <coughs> Sorry, you're right. Okay. I don't know how to play so no my attack yet. Um... Amber, it is your turn now. I'm prepared. Uh, which group of dwarves? 
I I can only get four of them. Actually, maybe they'll get closer. I'm gonna delay until after the dwarves. Uh. Okay, you delay until after the dwarves. Uh, I'll set your initiative as 11.01 .01 or something. Um, the dwarves are all gonna go. Uh, these ones, uh, I'm gonna put them two back. They go into the square where Alias was, or Kale, I mean, where Kale was standing, but he's not there anymore. Uh, these ones kind of do the same thing. Uh, these ones are gonna move up. You know, five feet up, and uh, they're going to attack the Cyclops. The Cyclops takes 11 damage. Um, okay. These ones are going to run in... Uh, they're going to provoke from Tiki, if you want to try to attack him. Oh, no. I don't even know if you have a weapon out. No. <laughs> Unless they're pushing a fly. Sally? Does Sally want to? Uh... Does Sally want to take an attack? Uh... Why are they? Oh, they're Actually, back these ones don't go sounds? there. They see they see this dragon, actually. They're going to attack the dragon. Why would they provoke? They don't have to be on top of you to attack, do they? They don't have to be, were. They, they can if they want to, though. But this one's not going to anyway. This one's going to uh, attack the dragon. The dragon takes 13 damage. This one's going to do that, though. Uh, it's going to move. It's going to actually try to move into your square. Oh, um, then, I mean, yeah, I guess Sally will uh, attack. Okay. Um, I think I have her thing set up. Uh, well, uh so just the first them. one, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sally does some damage to you. Okay. And they, in turn, are going to do some damage to you. No. You and Sally both take 13 damage. Oof. This one's going to run up. Do the same thing. Except not going to go in your square. It's just going to stand next to you. 12 damage to both you and Sally. Yeah, troops are kind of kind of annoying like this. Yes. This are. one is going to move in. First off, it's going to trigger. Hopefully, we still have some uh, AOE. It'll trigger a ready to action on Brugar if you want to take it. Yeah, I'm going to power attack uh, the troop. Okay. So it's, oh I shit! Thirteen what did I just and do? twelve. Okay. Uh, go away. <laughs> I just I just broke something. Okay, I think it's I think it's fixing. That second uh, attack the troop did does that also that oh does that hack, attack both of us? All right, I need to refresh actually. This it messed everything up. <laughs> I broke my roll twenty on yeah, it. I don't know. I, I hit a button. Uh, which one? The troop that's adjacent to us, not on top of us. Can they attack two targets while adjacent? Yes. Okay. Uh, so let me adjust. All right, I'm loading back in. So yeah, let's see. You hit the thing, the, the swarm of dwarves as they move in here. Um, your initiative, unfortunately, is going to change now. I mean, just before theirs, they're also going to move in to your square, which will provoke an attack opportunity as well. Alright, well, I have an attack of opportunity ready. Alright. Alright, the swarm is still holding together. Uh, and it's going to do some damage to you. And it's also going to do some damage to, well, yeah, it's going to do some damage to you and, uh, I think just you, because it's only attacking one square. And actually, hold off, uh, secret, the one that was next to you actually only damages you, doesn't damage Sally. Only the one that's sharing a square with you damages Sally. Okay, that's... 
Okay. That's how I'm gonna roll it. Um, I'm so glad one... I'm flying. I just want to put that out there. This one's gonna move in and attack Brugar as well. Is it moving into my space? Nope, this one's just moving next to you. Okay. So it does 10 damage. Um, and then this one is going to, uh, it's going to move through a threatened, it's going to double move basically through a threatened square. So you can, if you have combat reflexes, you can take your attack I do. against this one up here. Okay. All right, go ahead and take it then. Brugard I'm does sorry, Brugar, but reflexes. you're probably going to be hit by a uh, shadowy evocation here. Well, don't let Brugar know that you you did it. <laughs> That's all. I'll I'll yell out a warning in Yeti. That seems reasonable. And this one actually can't really. Uh, well, it can it can double move over here. And attack uh, Tiki. Fun. Ten damage. Oh no. Stop it. To who? Me. To Tiki. Okay. And it's Amber's turn now. Uh, so, this is why I delayed. Uh, <laughs> everybody yeah. on the ground in this circle. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, including Brugar. Okay. Uh, need to make me a uh, will save and then a reflex save. DC 23. And what spell is this that you're sh using? Shadow, con Shadow Evocation Fireball. Alright. Are you sure that doesn't hit Razael as well? He's only 10 feet up in the air. Oh, maybe well, it's centered. Sorry, Razael. Maybe it's centered. No, I think I think he's gonna hit Razael as well. Razael, you need to make a will save and then a reflex save as well. I gave you a warning in Yeti. It's not real. <laughs> in Yeti? <laughs> I don't understand that language. What do I get? Wait, do I get well, will or reflex? Which one? Both. A will save and then a reflex save. Will save, more like will definitely save. Okay, yeah, uh, Razael takes 10% uh, of the damage, Brugar takes 20%. Uh... Alright, so there's how many swarms are getting hit here? Six of them? Yeah. Seven? Yeah. Six. Okay, six of them are. So I'm going to start off with their will saves first. Roll sixty twenty. Um, I think they all fail. I think they all fail. You're right. Uh, and then they get reflex saves as well. Yep. Uh, what's the DC again? Twenty three. It looks like uh, one of them made the save, uh, and the rest all fail. So the rest are all going to take full damage from this. Except it's actually going to be more than full damage. I wasn't listening. So, uh, what happened? Razael takes uh, three damage, and Brugar takes six. Oh my God! A okay. betrayer! You traitor! Uh, <laughs> let's see. Well, like he it's... he disbelieves the fireball. Like, hmm, this is really fire. It just feels a little warm in his armor. Hey, I didn't even know Brugar was there. He doesn't right, really mind, one, honestly. This was weak. Gone. Oh, sorry, Brugar actually, takes seven, not six. I think you actually take out almost all of these. Um... Yeah, you, you take out almost all the swarms. There's only one up there, and then this one that you didn't hit. 
So a whole bunch of flame engulfs all these dwarves, and they all just kind of... They all shriek out, and it kind of is maybe a little disturbing, but then they disappear into the ether, and you realize, of course, still that they're... Of course, they're not real. Um... On its turn, Brugar gets to make another will save. Okay. Oh, I'm rolling good on those. Alright, you're not actually staggered. But, uh, the memory that steps forward actually is one that uh, a lot of you actually recognize anyway. Ooh, one of my great battles. Yes, what steps forward is this uh, strange creature that you fought before. a lobster? It looks sort of like a lobster. Yay! <laughs> you see the, the chul, and uh, the environment, of course, kind of has this sort of uh, reminiscent of, like, kind of the uh, undercity of Kermaga. Ooh, yay. And uh, there he is. He's the Chul. He's back. He's oh, back I'm with a vengeance. Uh, does he summon in this in this spot here? Yes, he summons right here. He appears right here. Um, let's add a turn. He's going to be going right at uh, just before Brugar, actually. Uh, the other thing he's going to do, he sees, uh, all these images of Amber now that she's no longer invisible. So, what that she's going to do, she's going to cast a spell. Oh boy, what spell? She's casting Dispel Magic, targeting uh -huh. you. Spell that pesky magic. Um, I think she failed. Do you have any, uh, do you have anything that's caster level, uh, 13? Any items uh, perhaps you use, like a potion or a scroll that was cast level 13? You mean after the... I mean, I'm caster level 10. Oh, sorry, caster level 13 plus 10, so tw it'd be 23. So it gets rid of uh, I do not his believe scroll so. of thing. No, that's caster level higher than me. That's caster level 15. Yeah, it's... Right, but... The DC... I guess, I guess I'm asking if there's anything you have... Anything that a, D, that a caster level check of 13 will dispel. So it'd have to be something, like, really low level. You'd have to have, like, a level 1 or 2 item, basically. Uh, no, basically, if you I, had, like, a, a low level potion, like maybe. That. Oh, okay, damn, so your caster level check was... I rolled, like, a 2 on the caster level check. It was pretty bad. So, nothing happens. Um, she tries to dispel something and fails to dispel anything. It's like what happened last turn for me. Yep, basically. Um, so it's now Kale's turn. Oh, actually, this this uh, obscuring mist is gone now, isn't it? Because they got hit by fire. Obscuring yeah. mist is the one that burns away. So. Yeah. Yay, Amber! <laughs> I don't know if I can select this obscuring mist or not, like this stupid circle without selecting everything else, so it's just stuck there for now. You have to zoom in a little bit so you can get your cursor exactly on it. That's how I do it, at least. There we go, I got it. Alright. Thank you, Secret. That helped. Um, Why are flags maybe blue and purple instead away, of yellow? What happened? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> so what do you do, Kale? You're up 20 feet in the air. You see there's like still a few swarms wandering around. Your dragon got beat up by, I don't know, you probably want to move your dragon away. Okay. Probably flies yeah. away somewhere. Mm -hmm. uh -oh. Rise of flies. Rise of flies away. Uh, what do you do, though? I... Do 
Can we put the damage that the Cyclops took from the Swarm already on? I don't see it on the sheet, on the on the character icon, so I don't remember what it took. Huh? Oh, I have that written down somewhere. It was 11 damage. You have it written down somewhere? Okay. I'll put it on the... I'll put 11 on the green field there, so I know it took 11 okay. damage. Yeah, that's fine. Um, here, I'll fill it out. Um, I'm gonna cast Shocking Grasp and hold it. Okay, you have Shocking Grasp. And you're just gonna hold it? Which way do I? Yeah. You're not gonna move anywhere? Yeah, I'm... Alright, so you're flying in place, you have Shocking Grasp crab. cast. Uh, He's ready. Right. You're gonna fly down to the crab? Oh no! You got you gotta respect this crab thing. The crab was a beast. The crab is a beast. Now it's like even harder. It did almost kill uh Philippe. Yeah, um, but a lot of things almost killed Philippe, let's be real. <laughs> it actually does not uh take an attack on you. Are you gonna do your free attack on him then or Yeah, I'll do my free attack on him. Okay. It's still technically flat-footed right now. Actually, no, it has combat reflexes. Um, oh, it actually only has ten foot or five foot reach though. Anyway, so you're fine. No attack opportunity from it. You fly down and you try to cast shock and grass. Go ahead and do your attack. Dang. That unfortunately will uh, miss. Okay. Gotta go in and save these guys. But you do still have shocking grass for next turn. Uh, TQ, it's your turn. You are next to a swarm of angry dwarves. Yeah. So uh, she, uh, Sally's gonna five foot step. Uh, okay. Tiki's going to cast a cure serious on herself. Okay. You heal yourself. And then the Cyclops is gonna fall around. Cyclops smash. Did the Cyclops use the nat 20 already? No. No, it has not. No, uh, she hasn't used it. I mean, you, you, you could hit. make it a nat 1 too. It's not a nat you 20. You do hit though. What it is is I choose whether or not I want to proceed with the action or do something else. That's all that the... is. Uh, the second attack. No, you get attack... to choose the outcome of a die roll. The second attack hits. Okay, let me roll that one. Yeah, let's you once a day. The Cyclops can choose what the role is. So you can choose her to be a nat one if you really want it as well. Uh, that's not what yeah. I read, but let me reread it and make sure that I'm reading this right. Usually, you're gonna use it to make it a nat twenty, but uh, all right. You, you could make it anything. It. I want to be a nat. Oh, allows 17. it to select the exact result of one die. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Yeah. Well, why don't they just say make it so, a twenty? I mean... Jesus. <laughs> Well, unless you want to fail. I, I don't know why you want it to fail. Perhaps. Is it? Does it say specifically a d20, or could it be any dice? Like, could you just no, max roll your dice? No, it just says any insight of a die roll before the roll is Yeah, made. so you could theoretically so you you do. Apply, you you apply you hold on to dice it roll. every day, and you save that for when you level up. <laughs> Ah, you and you put you that your hit dice on that. With the Cyclops, yeah, you max your Cyclops home? <laughs> oh yeah, you, my god. If you're in a game where you roll for hit die, theoretically you could do that, yeah. I am silly. doing so this. Well, we don't we don't roll for hit die in this game, so... Mm -hmm. it's not Wait, gonna look, can I roll for hit die in this game? <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> no, it's not happening. Cool. Um, Real talk, though. <laughs> Round um, seven now. Instead of using the Cyclops' ability to roll a natural 20 on the attack, wait for it to roll a nat 20, and then use the then roll automatic nat 20 to confirm it. Yeah. Oh, my guy has like plus three to crit confirm. So yeah, I well, just want to max the damage on my that's D10 what or whatever I have. That's what a lot of times you will do if you're GMing a Cyclops, is you just be like, alright, I'm not going to make it auto, like, unless, right, unless you need hit. to. But a lot of times you'd be like, I'll just wait until I get a get a crit threat, and then I'll just automatically confirm it. 
That's if you yeah. want to like mean to your players and and kill them, which okay, Benji, so Benji, I, I think Benji that's need more to fair. do. Turn seven. Be, uh, turn seven. Lantern Archon suck. goes first. I'm that kid. Shit. You kind of suck. Yeah. Lantern Archon, what do you do? I was all ready. Oh, there's a chance for a crit confirm. Oh shit. I uh, sorry, I rolled that to the GM. Uh, but it's fine. I can I see, see it. it. Yeah. Does, does that oh. confirm the critical? No. No, it doesn't. Uh, does that hit? Yeah, you hit with two two touch attacks. He takes the damage. He takes. He takes. One two damage. One damage. One damage. Still. He still takes only one damage. You don't really need to roll for damage. He's gonna take one damage no matter what. Okay. Oh my I, god. I'm, I'm gonna stop rolling the damage. He we takes two damage this turn. The thing has. No, it's because because this is a shadow conjuration. It's he only takes twenty, and he does, oh, and he knows okay. it's not real. He only takes twenty percent damage from it. I see. Wait, 20, or twenty five percent. The 20%. the summon negates all DR with its light rays. I see. Yeah, it's untimely. Do we know if the hag has DR? Uh Amber yeah, does, I yeah. Do. Okay. Did she tell us? As DR versus cold iron and magic. Uh they can okay. be overcome by it has to be cold iron a uh, magic cold iron to overcome her DR basically. Um, so... it's now Razael's turn. Mithril counts as cold iron. Shit, I didn't prepare that spell though. No, Mithril counts as no, silver. No, Mithril doesn't count as cold iron. Oh, it counts as silver. Shit. A plus three weapon counts as cold iron for purposes of overcoming DR. What about. Wait, what about a weapon with the Bane against evil outsiders? Uh. The Bane damage would work fine. Actually, what it about... might, because it would probably. It probably It'll would work overcome. because. Yeah, it'll overcome because it'll also count the enhancement bonuses too higher than whatever it is, and you have to have at least plus one on it, so it's going to yeah. make it a plus three in there for a, it'll overcome What it. if it's so, a yeah. good aligned weapon? What does good aligned uh, even do? Matter. Is that good just DR not, versus evil? Or whatever? Yeah, it might not actually matter in this case, but there's a lot of creatures that have DR that can only be overcome by alignment-based weapons. Okay, anyways. um, So, I see these dwarves around me. I also see this yep. crab thing that, uh, uh that, uh, Kale walked up to. Yeah, you've never seen one of these things before, and neither has Kale, actually. But really? Rugar, Amber, and Tiki recognize it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I see a lot of weird creatures in my day. It wouldn't be surprising if I fought one of these two. Well, maybe you fought one but before, but you haven't seen this specific I one. I don't I mean, recognize you can it. Roll a, you can roll a Knowledge Dungeoneering to see if you recognize it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I don't have that. Yeah. Okay, I have not seen one of these. I'm going to attack the crab looking thing with five foot step and full round it. Okay. And yeah, I think all my buffs are good um until I'll worry about it around like round ten. Well that's, that's the one I need to start, start worrying off. about it. Yeah. Assuming we get to round ten, there might be I mean, you guys are only supposed to keep this thing distracted for a certain amount of time. He didn't give you a specific number, but... I kind of want to just go for the hag, but... If we get to round 10, I'm casting a uh, Mindscape door. What, All right, I'm full rounding the crab thing. Yeah. Let's go, boys. I don't know, I kind of like I want to make sure my body's stuff. okay. Yeah, I kind of like it, too. We're getting lots of XP, hopefully. Mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> You'll probably get a pretty good chunk of XP. Level uh, so let's see here. I think... I think all those attacks are going to hit the Chul, actually, and confirm. We rolled pretty good. Twice? Yeah. Two crits, again? Improve critical, MVP? MVP? Yeah, you get two confirms here. Uh, is this enough to kill the Chul outright? I don't know if it is, but it might be. I still haven't used my sword spell because everything's dying in like one hit. Well, well, it is when you do that much damage. Yeah, I have every buff imaginable on, pretty much. Yeah, this you just kill this thing. <laughs> I'm like, before it even gets ha! to go. I professional monster hunter. Hang on, let me. 
I just want to flaunt that I destroyed right. the monster. Brugar, what do you do? You still have a dwarf, my... a dwarf swarm next to you. 36 on my monster hunter skill check. Thank you. Professional I could, here. Uh, I could hmm. trip Raziel and then disarm both of his daggers with my full round. Well, he is 10 feet up in the air. Oh, yeah, if I could yeah. reach up. <laughs> yeah. But that's what Brugar's thinking of doing. Like, she's such, he's such a show off. He doesn't I actually technically had to get to closer than probably to actually reach it. Which means I couldn't have full rounded, but maybe we don't worry about that. Hmm? I thought you were just five foot. I five foot, but I didn't realize I was ten feet. Or I forgot I was ten feet in the air. So I, using Pythagorean theorem, I was actually more than twenty feet away from the thing when I threw the daggers at it. it doesn't matter. You just have a penalty, range increment penalty, and you're still gonna kill it. I think it means one of your crits doesn't confirm, but you still kill it, like the second crit. Okay. Well, okay. Actually, I guess, okay. I guess neither of the crits confirm in that case, but you still kill it by hitting with all Plus, the attacks. Plus, it's tall enough that maybe the point I'm hitting it at is its head since I crit twice, and so it's not actually like going to its feet where it's standing. Yeah, I mean, it is It is eight feet tall. So, um, I just full so it's basically no difference okay. that I'm up in the air. Um, that is enough to take it out on the second attack. All right, There's still and a couple I of these things my ground. wandering around. Oh, did I delete the one that was on the turn tracker? I might have. <laughs> I don't know why you're upset yeah, about you freaking Razael being a show off when you're Brugar. Brugar doesn't like being up shown off. He does. I guess. Dude, the Rams that's, just missed such an easy field card. goal. And, Holy and, shit. And he acknowledges that you are very good at killing things, but he thinks that your style is flawed. Because the moment you get into trouble, you're kind of hosed. True. That's true. I like to live life on the uh, edge. I think these things, yeah, they go that's both, just before Amber. Okay. Uh, yeah, those things scrolling right back me. down. So they get to go now. Uh, these ones are going to continue attacking the Cyclops. Hopefully the party's at least like, damn, it's a good thing we brought this guy Cyclops along with us. takes 11 more damage. Uh, this one is going to run over towards Brugar. And it's going to go into Brugar's square, which is going to provoke. Attack of opportunity. Mm hmm. Take that. Uh, you hit it. You hit them. And then they're yep. going to hit you back. Okay. Take seven damage. Pretty bad roll. This other one here is going to move up. And it's going to do the same thing it's a brawl. to Tiki. Provokes from Sally, though. Uh, okay. Give them the hooves. The hooves. But they're gonna do 11 damage to you guys. Ooh, miss. Uh, you miss. To both of us? Okay. 11 to both of you, because they're inside your guys' squares. Uh, and now button. it is... Okay, and it's Amber's turn. I'm ready in action to use the uh, arcane bolt through Mage's crossbow at this thing. Okay. Wait, no. Uh, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do uh, the uh, enervate, but use my sorcerer's robes uh, to have fly arcane, arcane bolt. Yes. Yes. All right. Um, Myth is basically just turn. spoke a foreign language with his turn. I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> like, I don't know. I don't get it. What's going on? Um, on its turn, it is going to... It is going to, again, cast uh, a spell, which you identify as Dispel Magic again. It's going to attempt to Dispel Magic so on you again. Triggers my ready to action. Correct. Go ahead and do your attack. 
That hit? Yep. Does that overcome SR? Does not overcome SR. Shit. Oh, it rolled a lot better on its caster level check. It gets rid of your mirror images. It was specifically targeting those. Mirror image is gone. Um, other than that, it does not... It continues kind of cycling through uh, Artifact. Brugar's memories, but nothing else happens. Amber's next turn is cast mirror image. And it's now Kale's turn. Wait, wait, hold on. What happened with that? It dispelled Amber's mirror images. Okay. If my Actually, attack roll uh, and my caster level check had been the other way around, would I have overcome its SR? Uh, yeah. Oh, no. I'll move up next to it. Uh... You move up next to it. As you try to move up next to it, it takes an attack opportunity. Because even though it is bound by these chains, it is still able to move its hands around in some fashion. And it's going to attempt to claw at you. Okay. Uh, does a 28 hit your AC? Yeah. Alright, how many images you got up now? Three. Three images. Okay. Hits an image. You're up next to it now. Alright. I um attack it. Okay. You attack it. Uh, that hits. Go ahead and roll versus a caster level check to overcome its SR for your uh, shocking grasp. The armsman, yeah. Uh, all right. You're gonna overcome the spell resistance. So go ahead and roll your damage for your attack and for shocking grasp. All right. So it will be roll d6 plus 8, and then roll 90. So what sort of what sort of weapon are you using to hit it? Cold iron ghost touch. Okay, and it's like a plus 2 or something? Yeah. Okay. And some Shocking Grass damage. Okay, it looks like the Shocking Grass damage all goes through, and so does the weapon, the damage from your weapon. Ha. Huh. Take that, Amber. And it kind of recoils a little bit. Chains rattle behind it. Uh, it doesn't make any noise, though, because it can't. Um, round 8... It's now Tiki's turn. Okay. Um, have a Cyclops for a while longer. Let's roll full round. That hits. That also hits. And you take out that dwarf swarm. He's got a five foot step. Okay. Uh, what does Tiki do? You're in a you're in a dwarf swarm. Yeah, that sounds really weird. Um, a bunch of dwarves around you, beat trying to beat you up. Yeah, I know. It's pretty. Steal creepy. your lunch money. Damn it! Eat the frog. Eat the frog is what they're chanting. I'm gonna have Sally five foot step, and then I'm gonna cast cure moderate wounds on Sally. Okay, you're gonna have to make a concentration check though. That's fine. I can do that. Because you're still technically within the swarm, uh, in their reach at least. Actually, like, I don't know if she knows. No, she doesn't know whether or not they can attack of opportunity or not. So they're going to do it anyways. Hmm. 
Maybe I'll just have her go further and just let them attack her. Okay. If they do. They attack you as you they do as you run out, so you take twelve more damage. Okay. Uh to me or Sally? Uh to you. Okay. But then you can cast your cure moderate anyway. Yeah, and then I'll heal Sally up. Uh, it's the round tracker. Oh, I know what happened. The round tracker. <laughs> We're actually still at round seven, technically. I was gonna say, That's I funny. thought that Tiki was before the end of the round. She is. It's because I resorted it, and the round number was higher than Tiki's initiative, so the round went <laughs> before Tiki. It's uh, right. I make a character whose name is Round. That guy misses. So, yep, the Lantern Archon misses. Um, it's now Razor. Yay! Elster. I see that uh, Kale's taken the initiative here and gone up to hit this thing. I kind of want to do that too. Okay. You guys got this covered. So I'm gonna move Fly up over here. Hereabouts and throw my one dagger at this thing. My adamantine. And I will use my Cyclops Nat 20. Yeah, I'm going to use my Cyclops Nat 20. So just use the roll on this as a crit confirm. Does a 33 confirm? Uh, yep. Okay. And I need to double my damage, so d10 plus 19. But the... Do I keep that? I keep that one, right? I oh, know, I rolled... If I double, I do 2d10, right? So I get to roll a new d10. So I rolled a 2. So I do 41 damage, but part of it gets blocked. I think. Maybe not. Um, what's the total enhancement bonus on your weapon again? Just plus 1? So my weapon is a plus 1, but it does have the evil outsider thing from the Crusader's Edge Crusader's spell. Edge. So it's an outsider bane weapon? So it is... Yeah, let me just get the spell real quick. Uh, it gains the weapon bane quality against evil outsiders. Okay. Uh, so it does a little bit more damage, actually, than what's listing there, because you get the enhancement bonus. Also, roll 2d6. It's going to add that as well. Okay. And I will also tell you that there are things that happen because I crit it. So it gets shaken for one round from Weapon of Awe. And because it's an evil outsider, and I crit with Crusader's Edge, and it's evil subtype, yeah, then I nauseate the outsider for 1d3 rounds. The outsider can reduce it to one round with a successful fort save. And I don't actually know what the DC is, so I'll have to check that. Um, where is... Crusader's Edge. I'm guessing it made the fort save. I'm assuming it did because my DCs aren't high. DC yeah. is... Wait, is it just like normal 4th level DC? So like 17? Yeah, 17. 17. Yeah, it makes that then. Alright, so but it's nauseated it's for, one for one round, round, and it's shaken for one round. So it's still so nauseated it's, for one round? Yeah. It's still nauseated for one round, even if it succeeds to save. Otherwise, it would be D3 rounds. That's pretty good. Here. There's the text. Does it, so the you're using it as a... Yeah. yeah, does the fact that you're using the spell as a ranged weapon matter? Uh, it. I cast the spell on a melee weapon. I happened to throw said melee weapon, but I cast it on a melee weapon, is the way I was thinking it worked if 
you want to say that's not how it works, then we'll have to deal with that. I, I meant to ask uh, you, and I forgot. Yeah, I'll allow it. Okay. Thanks. I'll have to look into it later, but for now, I'm going to allow it. Uh, Alright, so it's nauseated for one round. That's pretty strong. What does nauseated actually do? Uh, it means it can't it can take only any make standard actions. actions. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty good. But it's only one round. Uh, Brugar, what do you do? You have a bunch of dwarves swarming around you. I'm gonna, kicking you. I'm gonna fight them. I'm gonna swing right. my hammer around at them. Because I know they aren't really my academy mates, but they just look like them. And Correct. some of them I would have uh, swung a hammer at anyway. <laughs> yes, probably. Maybe to an extent it's, uh... Cathartic. <laughs> uh, I think yeah. that's gonna take it out. The only yeah, thing that, that would make this better is if Ulf was here. And that, uh... You take out that swarm, there's only one left. Alright. Yeah. On their turn, I, they're gonna I, I run yell up. at them. Yeah, they're, and they're gonna take the bait, and they're gonna run in and attack, try to attack you. You get an attack opportunity against them again. Against these ones as well. I missed. They do six damage to you. Alright. Alright, Amber, it's your turn. Uh, I hate SR. Uh, I'm gonna do the same thing I did last turn, except I'm pretty sure it's nauseated, so I'm not gonna wait. You're just gonna shoot at it then? Yeah, I'm just gonna shoot at it. There's a chance That'll for a be a chance uh, for a critical. That confirms. You just gotta get to the SR. You do. Oh baby. You get to the SR. Two D four negative levels. Ah, oh, it's still only three, but that's still good. Yeah, only three negative levels. And nine force damage. Alright. Ha, ah, take that, hag. It's pretty useful. Uh That yeah. was a bunch of really high rolls. Yep. Um Alright, let's see on its turn. It is nauseated, but it is get, still able to do something else that it can do for free, basically. Let's see, who's it going after? Um, Amber, make a will save. <clears throat> it's your turn now. I love hearing Pluto uh, roll the die IRL. Sure. Can't divine anything about me, though. That's correct. So, uh, 33. Yeah, you are not... You are not staggered, but it attempts to try to pull your memories, but obviously things do not go as it expects. Rather than what happened before, where memories are flashing around, instead, everyone's surrounded by a void. There is nothing around you, including there's no air, so nobody can there's nobody can breathe or anything now. It's it's just, there's just a void around you now. Uh, other than that, it doesn't do anything. Everybody. Kale, it's uh -oh. your turn. You're in a void. You can't breathe. God damn it, Amber. I can help you with this. Um. Okay. I can still take other actions, though, even though I can't breathe. You can hold your sure. breath. Sure. And you can hold your, you can hold your breath for a while. Score. And you're going to hold your... Yeah, or if you take... Uh, anytime you take a standard action, though, it's going to take two rounds up, so you can hold... If you're going to keep attacking, you can only hold your breath for your con modifier. So it's probably still going to be like a minute. Con modifier rounds? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I'm fine. Score or modifier? If it does hit you with... Uh... Wait, wait. Con... It's con score, ability con score, Con score, right? yeah. not modifier. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, okay. Score, yeah. Alright, that's fine. 
Um, Keep in mind, though, I'm while you're holding to... your breath, if you're taking standard actions, you cut the total time in half. Correct, that's what I'm right. saying. It goes from double to just your con score. Yeah, if you're going to keep doing attacks and stuff, it's going to be just your con score. Sure. Um... Uh... I'm going to cast um... Shocking Grasp. Can you cast Shocking Grasp? There's no air. There's there's no air. You cannot cast any... There's no sound. You can't cast anything that has a verbal component. Uh, so unless you have a uh, silent spell, you can't actually cast it. Okay. That's insane. I have taken your fun. <laughs> That's right! You heard my world now. Well, it's oh, Amber's it's memories, fine. sort of. I'm just gonna <laughs> rage in full round attack. Fine. Okay, right. worst case, we kill Amber this thing and then Amber, Amber teleports us out. Well, Amber can't That's teleport you plan. out right now. I have silent spell. Can't you use a scroll? Oh, you do have silent spell. Oh, okay, then you probably can if you have if you have a high enough spell slot. Then to use the scroll. Teleport, though. Um, you have to speak to see. use a scroll. Yeah. Uh, all of those attacks miss. Yeah, that's what I figured. Fields Kale Man. Uh, oops. Round. Stop misbehaving, Tiki. It's still round eight. It's your turn. Oh, okay. Um, Cyclops move. Cyclops charge. I feel like, or is it? Yeah, yeah, we're we're still good. I think you're right. Cyclops, Cyclops char runs over. Is he actually he can actually charge? All right, cool, that works. I'm gonna do attack on the swarm here. Yeah. The dwarves. Um, he would say something about the dwarves, but <laughs> the dwarves can't breathe either. By the way, oh. they're they're uh, they don't look happy about it. Cyclops misses. Um. All right. Okay. What does Tiki do? What, you have what's... silent spell. Uh, maybe, yes. Something like that. Maybe not, I don't know. Let, let me look at this. Air bubble has no verbal components. Perfect, that makes to. sense. That makes sense that it would be because of what it's designed to do. It should be something that doesn't need verbal mm -hmm. components. Alright. I'm gonna cast So you're casting air bubble. Air bubble on myself. Okay. What about Sally? I tell Sally to just hang in there. I pet her on the necks, and she holds her breath. Okay. So Tiki has air bubble. You try to you try to reassure uh, Sally. Even if she freaks out, can't really do anything about it. Uh, so. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually gonna. Uh... Because I don't want the round to tick up again. And I do have right. silence. Uh, we're back on... We're actually in round 9 now, so Lantern Archon... I think it's still going to be here. You summoned it... I don't remember what round you summoned it, but it's still I here. I summoned it round, like, 3, because round this 1... This is... Yeah, this is going to be the last round for haste, since you cast haste just before oh, you no. plane yeah. shifted in here. So... Uh... At the end of this round, it's just like at, when when the round ticks up to ten, it's going to be gone. It goes cast out of combat, so it's going to actually end on the round tracker. Initially. It deals a damage. It deals one damage. One whole damage. Uh, uh, I need to see... Uh... Must read what's written on the scroll. Um, that's deciphering. Activate. So it's subject to casting as if normal. Uh, I have a scroll of air bubble. 
Okay, that's one you could use. Air bubble does not have verbal components. Correct. I use said scroll of air bubble. All right, you pull out a scroll of air bubble and you activate it. Uh, you don't need to make any checks because you are high enough caster level and so forth, and it, you have air bubble on you now. Well, when it's your turn, you will. It's not your turn actually yet, is it? Oh yeah, sorry. It's Razael's. <laughs> it's Razael's turn. It will. Um, it will be there to affect me when I need it. Yeah, I'm just gonna full round this thing. Okay. You're holding your breath and you're full rounding it. Yep. Actually, I'm gonna move like here. Get the angles. Okay. So it's still it's still like full round is still just like you know my normal con. It's not like extra because I'm full sure. rounding, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So if I so I'm just thinking to myself, I'm doing I'm not gonna take back my action. But if I kill this thing while we're in this little airless void, we might all die, right? Is that no, we'll something? Be okay, well I'm full rounding it. I rolled a lot of red. Uh I a bunch of green too. Let's see. Two greens. You hit you hit one Four attack, uh, and you hit two more attacks. But no confirms. Um, only the first one is the Bane weapon, right? Only the Adamantine is the Bane weapon, yep. Okay. Oh yeah, and I'll, I'll discharge my, uh, my thingy, my stored spell, Bestow sure. Curse. Okay. So, uh, the so those... tag takes a minus four to attack, saving, throws, uh, ability, check, and steal attack. No, first you have to overcome its SR, and then it also gets a save. So, let's see. First, oh, I mean, it saves yeah. at least are weakened because it's getting enervated, so you got that going for you. Go ahead and roll a 2d6 for the bane damage on for the one attack that hits on your on your adamantine dagger. Is it 2d6? Because oh, does that not get multiplied on crit? Does. Bane damage does not get multiplied in crits, but even if it did, you don't actually confirm any crits. Right, but last time I confirmed a crit, and I thought no, yeah. the 2d6 the bane, was... The bane was... damage yeah, does okay. not. No. I I don't use bane. Okay. So it's 2d6 for bane, so there's 6 damage. So, let's see. I didn't crit, so I don't uh, nauseate it this round. Damn, I could like permanently nauseate it if I critted it every time with my adamantine. That's yeah, insane. Theory. I'd have to roll, you know, 17, 18, 19, 20. Side. Bestow Curse does. Uh, yeah. No, the Weapon of Awe. I'm weapon. not sure, actually. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't even think about that. What was the name of it? Weapon of Awe? No, no, no. It's Weapon, well, weapon of Awe is the Shaken one, so that's one to check. Uh, the other one is Crusader's Edge. I'll check. So Weapon of Awe does allow spell resistance, but only for... That's spell resistance harmless, so it's for the object. So no, it doesn't. The effect there doesn't. Crusader's, Crusader's edge. edge. SR no. Spell resistance no. Okay, so you're fine on that. Okay, and then I have to roll against spell resistance for the bestow curse though, because it does. Yes. I just want to look at this, and to do that, I do a caster level check. So d. 20 plus 10 or something. 19? No bonuses? Does not, does not go through spell resistance. Boo. But you do some damage oh, well. to it. And that spell gets used up, right? Correct. Yep. It fizzles. God, I, I hate that term. It just, it's the, the uselessness. Fizzle? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I didn't actually things cast fizzled. Bestow Curse because that was stored from a previous day, so that's kind of cool. I still have that spell prepared, so I could put another one in it. But, okay. So, that's that's my turn. Alright, Brugar, I'm turn. like, you're a tougher monster than I'm used to fighting. So, Brugar is unsure what the hell is going on. He suddenly can't breathe anything. Yep. There's, There's no like air. Void around you. All black around us. 
All you see is the hag in this There's... like weird room. Yeah, technically nobody's actually like standing on solid ground either. You're all just kind of floating there. Good uh, thing okay, I can I wait. Can I fly? But I see these if there's no still trying air? to fight me, right? I yeah, guess I can. can. It's not like I'm you're using magical wings. flight. Yeah, you're using magical flight. But can Brugar if he doesn't have fly? Mm. Uh, nope, probably I'm not. Standing he's, standing... He's, he's standing on something. He's standing on one of the dwarves. Yeah, he's standing on one of the other dwarves. All right. Well, uh, are there are these dwarves still trying to fight me then, or are they like trying to breathe? Um. Yeah, they're all seem to be panicking. They're actually. It doesn't seem like they're trying to attack you right now. They're all panicking. <sighs> yeah. All right. Um. Uh. I I'm gonna go over to Tiki, and like hold my breath, but like shrug and flail my hands around. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> actually Yeah, you actually are able to like um uh, you're actually able to like kind of push off like one of the other dwarves and kind of are able to float over in that direction and yeah, you can you can actually give yourself enough momentum to get over to Tiki. And that's my turn. All right. Uh these dwarves are just kind of flailing around. Uh they don't do anything. Amber, I said you, my turn. I, you're doing the air bubble thing, all right? I'm doing the air bubble thing. I already deleted the scroll off my character sheet. All right, perfect. It was uh, a useful scroll. This... Rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> on this thing's turn, it is going to. I mean, it's already just been casting spells silently anyway. Um. So. It is going to cast a spell that you identify as Mirror Image. So, how many Mirror Images does this guy get? She gets... Uh, seven Mirror Images. So there's eight of her now. Oh boy. She casts that defensively. Makes her concentration check. Uh, Kale's turn now, so there's eight of her. Eight. And also, egg. also on her turn, Amber make another. Uh, Amber make another will save. Sure. Twenty. You're fine. You are not staggered. But yeah, it's still kind of like the same thing right now. Nothing, You don't see anything yet. It's just still this void. So there's still no air. All right. Well, I'm going to just withdraw then. All right. You kind of swing your arms away from it to give yourself some momentum, and you can actually just fly away. Yes, fly. It. Oh, you also have fly. Okay, so yeah, you can just fly then. You can go up to double your move speed. Okay. Uh, fucking round tracker? Why do you keep doing this? Why? <laughs> I don't even think I sorted this time. I just wanted to put itself above Tiki again. Uh, Tiki. Oh boy. You have air bubble, so you can cast spells now. Yeah. Um... Though I have science spell, I remember bringing that and it's in my feet list, but, um, it's cute. Oh, okay. Uh, Brugar looks like he needs Legal. help. I touch Brugar with an air <laughs> bubble. Alright, Brugar has air bubble now, too. Cyclops he like, does <sighs> Oh, thank you! Cyclops doesn't care about not breathing and he's gonna attack. Sure. He's just taking I'm out the not being so able to breathe angry. anger. Yeah, he's just gonna yeah, take out his anger. Yeah, but he's not real used to not having any sure footing, so he probably misses. Uh, oh, maybe yeah, not He hits the second one, though. He hits the second one. Alright, I'm gonna use you got my pre-roll. Can I- is, do I- is it too late? To, can I call that now? I wanna use my pre-roll and do max damages to this thing. That's fine. Yeah, go for it. You haven't rolled damage yet, so you can do that. You roll max damage. 
What is max damage on this Well, thing? it says she chooses the outcome of a die. Oh, singular? Yeah, and that's And he's technically rolling how true. many dice? What is he rolling three. on his dice? Is it 3d8 or 6 or something? So you can oh, make so one I guess of them a 6. I guess technically you can make one of them a 6, which is not really all that impressive, I guess. No, it's not. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to save it for his... You're just going to roll. Yeah, there you go. You rolled a 6 anyway. Uh, so it does, he does some damage to the to the confused dwarves. <laughs> oh no, they have to attack him now! That's fine. Yeah, well, they're not actually under the status effect confused, but... I, I was teasing. <laughs> I know. Um... All right, we're haste is worn off. Any other like ten, any other ten round buffs that were cast immediately before plane shift wear off. Anything that lasts yeah. like one minute wears off. So I'm assuming you guys can handle that bookkeeping on your own, hopefully. Oh yeah. But the main one, the main one is haste. Yeah. I only have the, I only have heroism on me too, but that's ten. I had so many things on, like. Yeah, heroism is fine. Um, the lantern archon gets to go right now, though. The top of the round. Does the lantern, lantern archon, archon have to breathe? I don't think the lantern archon has to breathe. I'm I'm pretty sure. Hero wisdom lasts longer, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's longer. Well, I'll allow that. Yeah, whatever. Oh, it shield? misses. Windpin for level. Oh, okay, yeah. That, that was I think. Of last of all. For a while. Uh, they both miss, yep. Actually, do they? This first touch I see. Uh, nope, those hit actually. Those both hit. Oh, I do two damage. Haha. -ha. Uh, they have mirror images actually, so roll versus the mirror image. Oh. D8 and a D, and then maybe another D8. Uh, breaks an image. D7. I'm, I'm actually doing, I'm doing it for Razael. He broke some images. Sally can hold her. All right, Razael, it's your turn. Rounds. Oh good. boy. Um, I have like two more things to check to see if they're still on or not. A uh, good aligned weapon is the last one I need to check. Where is that at? Aligned weapon. Last minutes per level. Cool. Okay. We are almost out of this. I will tell you now. <laughs> I'm going to... Let's see, I've used two uses of fervor i'm going to use a third use of fervor to recast um divine favor on myself because so i had two of those prepared just for this case <laughs> so got... i'm doing that as a swift action and now i'm going to full round attack the hag bitch their new name and dream hack okay. things are different now but whatever they'll be on the roll what's on it it's still a lot the same i just lost some bonuses dream hack is she a member of the dream girls <laughs> she's the one that got kicked out okay so you do confirm a crit on her if you hit through the mirror images, uh, and you hit one of their. So you have two attacks that potentially hit. You break one mirror image for sure at the end of it with your last attack. Go ahead and roll a d6 for the images. All right, because d6 is before I break, right? Yes. Okay. Yeah, you break with your last attack. So uh, I break one on that one, and then roll d5. I assume for the second attack yep. that hits. Yep. Uh, waiting around roll 20 to go. Also a 3. Okay. Also broken image. 
So then uh, I broke one on my then, last attack too. And then you break another, and then you break another image. So it's only got. So uh, there's three of them. There's only three. two images. Wait, no, there's three, Im three images. There's three images in her. Three of it. There's two of them are images. I think that's one off, isn't it? There are three of it. There are two images. Two images and himself equals three. Yeah, there were six. Right. Before. I know. Okay. So there were five images. Now there's down to now it's just down to two images because he broke three images. Um, okay. 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 I got it's it. It's Brugar's turn now. You can breathe again. Oh, all right. I can't breathe again. Well, That's two rounds of no air. It looks like the only yep. enemy, not really counting these doors, who are just kind of like uh, suffocating, I guess, is this mm -hmm. thing that everyone else is attacking, right? Yeah. Well, by everyone else, you mean me and the light. But I don't have one anymore. I don't have haste anymore. And but I can don't move have somewhere, fly? right? Yeah, you can, can I try to propel of... myself somewhere? Yeah. Okay, I'm at 20 feet over here. You can and probably propel yourself 40 feet. Well, with the double move, right? Yep. Basically okay, but, your normal uh, move It speed. doesn't look like this thing is attacking them. Like, not with weapons or claws or whatever. It's just there and casting spells. Maybe. It, it clawed at uh, Kale earlier. Okay. okay. Alright, that's all I need to know. That I'm keeping my Warhammer and Shield out, and I'm going to, yes, double move. Go to here. And yeah, that's my turn. Okay. Rugar yells, I'm coming for you! And the dwarves fell yeah, around you can Amber. Hear what it you... in your air bubble. Yeah, you can hear it, nobody else can hear you. Amber, that's what do all you that do? Matters. Uh, I ready an action to counterspell with the spell magic, and I activate my sorcerer's robes to give arcane bolt to her once once that happens. Okay. On its round, the landscape is no longer a void. Brugar kind of maybe face plants onto the ground. Uh, anyone that can <laughs> fly is still flying, but everybody else is kind of falls onto the ground, including the dwarves. They're in like a like a puddle over on the ground almost of dwarves. A puddle of dwarves. So anybody that doesn't have a fly you know, isn't have a way to actually fly is right now prone. Oh, okay. Um and the landscape now appears to look like uh Kreta's tower, the inside of it. Uh I believe everybody was in there at one point, right? I think so. Standing in there, you see one of these. This strange-looking fellow. <clears throat> if you have knowledge planes, you can identify it. And uh, it kind of, let's see, a description of it. It's a ghoulish-looking figure wearing a tattered robe, and it stares with milky white eyes as a uh, proboscis-like tongue sneaking out from... Uh, over its distended jaw. Yucky. Yeah, it looks pretty nasty. Uh, Amber recognizes this as a uh, memory devil. Uh, on its turn, it is going to attempt to cast a spell, so you can go ahead and try to roll a spellcraft and do your dispel magic check. The hag is going to try to do that, I mean. Dang. Alright, you know it is casting, uh... You know that it is casting fear. As in the spell fear. And I just make a caster level check against this, right? Correct. Um, that might be good enough since it's got that negative, uh... Or is it opposed caster level checks for counterspelling? I don't remember how that works. I think it's just a caster level check. And it has, it has four three negative, negative levels. Right levels now. Four? It has four negative levels right now. Damn. 
Let's uh, go this bitch. So I'm pretty sure that actually is enough to disrupt the spell. And seven force damage. Yeah, it takes seven force damage. Does the force damage have to roll separately versus SR? Maybe. I'll just give you the force damage. Um. So yeah, it recoils. It's unclear with sorcerer's row. Yeah, it's gonna re. I'm just gonna say it takes that force damage feedback from its own spell being countered. Um, that's its turn. It attempts to cast a spell and and fails because Amber disrupts the spell. Uh, Kale, oh, it's you. your turn. You can you uh you are now flying in what appears to be kind of a weird larger version of uh of the tower you guys were in on the plane of shadow. Yeah, but I'm still in void, right? Nope. No, you're not. No, you can breathe again. You're no longer in a oh, void. Okay. Air atmosphere is normal. Uh, all right. Um, hold on. And since you were flying, you are not prone. You can fly around as normal. All right. I fly back. Uh... There. You fly to there, okay. Uh, That's one action. I'm assuming you kind of fly like to here and then diagonal like that. Yeah. So it won't provoke. Okay. And then what do you do with your standard action then? Cast shopping grass. You doing that defensively, or do you cast it before you go up there? Cast it before I go up there. Okay. Cast Shock and Grass, and then fly up there. Um, alright. Tiki, uh, I don't... You did not have flight up or anything, did you? Like you and no. Sally? So I think you guys are both... You guys are both prone on the ground right now. Mm. You kind of fell onto the ground once the void disappeared. Yeah. Um... That's okay. Cyclops can't charge. Darn it. No, Cyclops is also prone. So are these dwarves, though. The dwarf swarm is also prone. Hmm. Cyclops will stand up and attack the door. Okay. Sounds good. Ha-ha! That hits. Okay. Maybe? Uh, yep, that's enough to dissipate the swarm. Sweet. Good job, Cyclops. You only have a couple of rounds left. Um... And I'm guessing... Jeez, what do Maybe I you're still to... on Sally, even though Sally's, like, collapsed on the ground. You could have her get back up, I guess. Uh... You know what? Let's, let's do a ride check on that. Yeah, yeah. I stayed in the saddle. Okay, um... Sally's okay. gonna stand up. Alright. Um. Looks like everybody's moving in to attack. I'm gonna have Sally move forward as well. And I guess I'll cast. Forbid action. All right, roll spellcraft or uh, roll a caster level check versus that's R. Yeah. And then it gets to make a will save. Yeah, I think I have this. If you program. make that check. Oh, shit, this is a level one spell, isn't it? It's a low DC. Oh well, I'm gonna forbid it to cast spells or spell like ability. Okay. Uh, let's see. Uh, twelve, probably not. Yeah, it does not overcome SR. So. Alright, uh, is that it? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, before we hit into round 11, behind, from behind him, or behind her, rather, uh -oh. 
six of uh, Athos Wait, what? appears Whoa. behind him, behind her. Grabs a hold. He's hovering above there. Grabs a hold, like basically touches the back of its head, and it kind of freezes up. And again, the landscape starts to shift again. This thing kind of wavers a little bit, and then it disappears. The uh, the memory devil. And instead, the landscape now looks like a uh, kind of a grayscale uh, library. Oh, shit. Stretches out as far as you can see. Uh, with shelves uh, reaching up endlessly into the heavens. One of the, uh, basically one of them is there, the other ones all kind of, uh, are doing a, you do not recognize this place with that check. Uh, they're all doing a, uh, they're casting kind of like, you can, you can tell that they, uh, they're pulling out like a tuning fork and they all begin kind of really quickly all, uh, like, uh, casting a, uh, a fabricate spell on the, on it. And this is happening right now. Uh, Lantern Archon, do you do anything as this is happening? Um, no. Lantern Archon stops attacking? Yeah. Okay. Razael, do you do anything? Mm, I don't know what's happening. I was distracted. So the hag is frozen up and has one of the Athoses standing behind her is is touching it and it's frozen in place while the other five are uh, basically uh, attuning a, a, a tuning fork. And the area around you now looks like an endless stretching library with shelves in all directions going out endlessly into the horizon frozen. and endlessly up to the heaven. She looks paralyzed. Did anyone else attack her? Or am I the first one to make the decision? You're the first one to go, so nobody else has had a I'm attacking her. You're going to attack her? Okay. To. I mean, she's paralyzed. It's a free kill. <laughs> Full round. But she's not quite paralyzed. Information. We're not going to get the tuning fork unless uh, he gets it's the information more, like, stunned. he wants. It's actually like stunned would be more proper term here, but yeah. <clears throat> Can't go over in a coup de gras, but uh, you can attack her. Um, so let's yeah, see here. didn't say anything, right? He no, he looks completely focused on his task. He just shows up and okay. is complete focus on his task. Um, I'm calling the so monster. I'm a monster hunter. Um, the first attack... Has a chance to hit, but there's still mirror images. Is it still three? Yep. Like D3? D3. I don't know why my... Hey, you hit through it. For a while. So you do some damage to it. That's not as um, good. Next attack... Breaks the image. Now has a chance to hit. Go ahead and roll oh. uh, a, D a D3 again. It's again. It. Oh yeah, and also roll roll now. forty, roll de forty six for your bane damage as well. Uh, wait, are we not doing the mithril dagger attack on the second one? No, the second. Okay, two d six for the first one. You're right. It actually kind of matters. Attack. Yeah, it does matter. Yeah. Uh, so two d six. Okay, so you do some bane damage. Uh, go ahead and roll your d three again for the second attack. For the Third attack, you mean? Second attack, second attack on your adamantine dagger. Third attack overall. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh man. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and roll two d six. Okay. And then go ahead and roll another d three for your critical hit. Wait. What about the second attack? Oh, it didn't hit. It just broke an image. That's correct. So actually, it's a D two. Okay. 
Yeah, it's annoying, but we have to actually do it in order to be right. Hey, you hit. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I never saw so many nat have... ones I loved. Hmm. Before he completely fucks up this operation. Roll 2d6. <laughs> mm -hmm. Alright. Oh, Zuduria. No one's um, saying I'm a monster hunter, I'm hunting the monster! Brugar is uh, prone right now, but it's your turn. You're prone. It's not uh, dead, though. It's not dead, no. He groans and gets up, complaining okay. about that fall. And uh, uh, He looks up and sees, yeah, like a bunch of the dudes seemingly, yep. like, holding it? I don't know. He's like, There's one of them that seems to be holding it, and then five of them oh, are yeah. basically all... Five. The other five are uh, molding a tuning fork. I guess he'll go up to the thing, and he's just like, you... You you're good. You got it. I'll I'll just make sure it doesn't attack. He, right. he yeah. did say it's okay if we kill the hag, right? He did say that. Yeah, but I'm not gonna. I don't know. Like he, I don't feel uh, like I should hit it unless it's trying to fight me. Before, like before we came in here, he said it's okay if we kill. He the hag. actually, he uh, he. You got the sense though that he didn't think that you guys would be able to. He's pretty sure that he wouldn't be able to. Well, I want to prove him wrong. So, he, so yeah, there. he kind of was like, uh, yeah, sure, try to do that. Amber, what do you do? Uh, I put I Razzle think... asleep or something, or like hold you don't him. do anything. You just watch. No, no, no. I, I, I don't think what Razzle is doing is useful. Uh, so deeper darkness. <laughs> deeper darkness. Okay. You you it's could just say, hey, don't kill the hag. You that, can't. That is deeper darkness is probably fun, centered. Though. Steeper darkness centered at the uh, at where the hag is at. I don't think at, telling right? you not to do something is strong or firm enough. So deeper. Maybe like on the it. chains right or, that are that are right on it. Uh, it's touched. Um, so I'm going to move uh, over here and touch the square next to the hag and cast okay. deeper darkness. Deeper darkness. All right. Uh, it's like a 20 foot radius or something. It is what a 60 actual? foot radius. 60 foot. Oh, okay, so boy. pretty much everybody's in darkness right now, in deeper darkness. At, and at even that. if you have dark vision, you cannot see. Which I don't. But you know, uh, Kale, have, it's your turn. You can't, you can't see anything. It's it's dark. What do you do? You do know what square it's in. So I mean, if you want it, if you also want to keep attacking it like Razael's doing, you can you can try yes. to do it. Kill the hag. I mean, that's what I'm gonna do. You five foot step up, and you're gonna attack the square the hags in. Mm-hmm. Doing just a full attack action. Yeah. You didn't do anything else like spell combat or any of that stuff, or? No, because I'm holding the shocking grasp. Well, you could you could do a spell combat and do your, your attacks first, and just and just hope that I your know, attack hits. I and don't want to minus okay. my attacks. Okay, that's fair. Go ahead and roll them. Uh, chance for hit, go ahead and roll concealment. You hit through concealment. I think that counts as a... Well, would that... That count as a... A zero, actually? If we were doing D100? Or would that count as a 100? I think that counts as a 100. He has to roll count as 100. You multiply by 10. To work. So one count dice counts as the 10s, and the other dice counts as the singulars. Six, no, no, six uh, through 10 would hit. Uh, yeah, yeah. One I think you're fine. Would miss. I think you're yeah. fine. You hit. So you, you hit your control, concealment. You know, D2. Go ahead and roll your spell, or your uh, caster level check, though, to get through the spell resistance. On your shocking grasp. Okay, does nope. not go through there. So you just get your normal. Dang, uh, that's good. You just get your normal weapon damage. It has SR twenty six. Uh, at this point, I'm fine telling you that. Oh. Okay, it takes some damage. Uh, the 
15 is not going to hit. And you don't have haste anymore, so I think that's it. Oh, actually, oh, wait. we don't have haste anymore. We don't have haste anymore. Yeah, I gotta take some of that damage back. You just have to take <laughs> off the last hit. It. Shit, that's a crit, too. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I thought I trusted you to do your bookkeeping. Well, I unchecked the haste check mark. I just didn't uncheck the haste attack yeah. check mark. <laughs> Dude, I... Uh, I'm Kale, trying, but think... there's so many things I'm trying to do here Boy. with the character sheet. Oh, oh, how sad for you. I know. Oh, you're ready to see him to do. Micromanaging one character is so hard. <laughs> it's alright, though. I'm like I'm the same way in Secrets game, so... I, 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 know, I know the feeling. I'm not right, trying uh... to miss things. <laughs> Tiki, what do, you, uh, what do you do? Do you do anything? Or are you just going to wait it out? Oh. Um, I'm gonna wait it out. Okay. That's fine, because we're actually gonna exit combat at this point. Uh, exit rounds, at least. So, at, from th at this point, everyone is expelled from the Mindscape. I don't remember, I should have marked where everyone's tokens were, because you're gonna be back, your tokens basically would be back where you were when you entered Amber the Mindscape. Amber was way up front, I was, I was with right everyone right else here. was with the party. party. Yeah. Um, it doesn't really matter here, but, uh, so, there will only be one of these guys, the other four, or the other five that you saw there were left behind in the dreamscape, or the mindscape. Uh, is the hag still in the physical world? Yes, the hag is still in the physical world now. And you guys are all pretty close to the exit here, and he, he basically, uh, I'm assuming that everyone will do as he says here, but he's because he's gonna say, everyone come back to me. <clears throat> so I'll uh, say I guess but Athos, we can finish her, she's weak. Uh and you realize that she, she isn't actually say? because uh, No, because she doesn't look the weak. damage you did yeah, the damage you did in the mindscape did not did not actually physically okay. hurt. I'm I'm running to Athos as fast or flying to Athos as fast as my little Magic wings will carry me. Like, get me out of here. <laughs> yeah, I'm just gonna assume that, like, it maybe tries to cast a spell at somebody, and uh, but nothing significant happens. Everybody manages to get back to him, and he, he plane shifts you back out. You know what's and really negative weird level here? stick, right? There. What is really weird here? Me. Um, Tiki summoned that Cyclops in a dream. But now it's out yeah. here. And it's no, the like, Cyclops is, is not here. <laughs> Cyclops, the Cyclops, here. the Cyclops is not here. Actually, the Cyclops is still in the dreamscape. Uh, it realizes, oh my god, my I'm just a dream. <laughs> yeah, it probably ceases to exist. As soon Kale, as the do you come does. over here to leave? I'm assuming everybody does. Nope. And he plain and if not if behind. not we can continue this next session, but um <laughs> No no I'm I think we're all leaving. I'm assuming everybody groups up with him and he plane shifts you guys out. Um I wanna do a short session called Tiki Cyclops has an existential crisis. Oh, <laughs> we should do We should do uh, that. That's while Mantis is gone. Run yeah, that'll be that'll yeah. be like one of the sessions when Mantis is gone. Let's we'll do some little tangential up. games, yeah. Some side stories. So but the way plane like, shift works, since he's not plane shifting you into a really small demi plane like he was here, he's not able to get you into a specific location. So you guys actually don't end up back specifically in Corvosa. You end up actually in the wilderness outside Corvosa. Oh snap! With him? With him? Yep. You just all plane right, so shift we're all together at least. He plane shifts there. You guys are in. You guys are in back in Varicia, but you're not in Corvosa specifically. As soon as we get back and say, so, did you get what you needed? Uh, yes. I, I did get what I needed. Thank you. I oh, that's that good. That was, that was a doozy of a fight. Ask him what now? Did you I see any of what was the it? fighting? Uh, I did see what you were fighting. The, uh... That void caught me off guard. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that was all about. I just look at Amber. I'm pretty sure I spellcrafted when the hag cast it on Amber. But he holds he holds like up 
he holds up that tuning fork that he was that he had in there, and you you see that he actually he actually does have somehow he manages to actually have that that tuning fork. Still. Nice. He's like, this is what I needed. So he has a tuning fork for that demi plane now. For that demi plane that he accessed through the mind. So I'll ask there. him. Wait, he. Oh, I see. Uh, so what? Why did you want that uh, tuning fork? You want to go back to the mindscape? No, not the mindscape. The the uh, the memory that, that I want to go to the plane that that was a memory of. Yeah, he oh. has he has access to the witch call it now. <laughs> the library of Babylon, not quite, but something along those lines. Oh Perhaps. wait. How did how did you make it become the library though? We couldn't control it. It was just things from our past. You said yes. Like... I, uh, that's what I needed time to uh, to do. Is, is I needed time to cast a spell on it to, to hijack its mindscape. Oh, that's so clever. And I needed, and I needed to use uh, I needed to use another spell in order to uh, get enough power to overcome the, to overtake. It's control of the mindscape, which took a, a lot out of me, but wow, but it, it that, worked. That would, is that how you always tune your tuning forks? Is through things like that to, I mean, maybe not dream hag, but to get no. to secret demi planes. This was a unusual and very risky endeavor that I wouldn't normally undertake. Brugar butts in and says, well, I can, you can see how capable we are, particularly me. And if any of you or your uh, prestigious wizards ever need a capable bodyguard, you know where to find one. And I add, or someone who actually takes out the creatures. <clears throat> I don't know if, if he saw that, but I was the one who actually killed pretty much everything. Professional monster hunter, Razael. Oh, sorry, Razzai, a professional monster hunter. Well, I don't know. I think I slew the most things. <laughs> I might. I tell him, only hire him if you want large cats to pounce and eat his face. <laughs> we, uh, oh, my God. I do have... I do potentially have uh, situations that will come out of this that I may seek help with later but uh we'll get to that when it when it comes but i do owe you now this and he pulls he kind of digs through and he has like a bag of holding he kind of digs it out and he pulls out a tuning fork and he hand holds it out it's a different tuning it. fork okay. and he says that should get you to the demi plane that you're seeking and I really hope that I'm doing the right thing giving this to you. Uh, as I said before, I'm I'm worried about what you're going to find there. I don't know what's in there myself because I never ventured past the Guardian out that waits outside of it. But Look, my passion in life is killing unnatural, especially weird abnormal creatures so what what's the harm that's going to come out of that oh i'm not worried about i'm not worried about the guardian i'm worried about what it's guarding no but no matter what it is if my purpose is just then i'm not going to cause any harm he's right? worried that we're going to get into something over our heads and it's going to turn ill i'm worried that it'll spill over and affect more than just than just you. Precisely. Well, be extra careful then. But if I'll just have to remember that if this, if something, anything ill does happen, it'll be my responsibility to clean it up. Hey, if we make the mess, we clean it up too. Uh, do you need help getting back to Corvosa from here? I'll take a free teleport. If you don't mind, it would be nice to rest after this dreary and perilous fight. Otherwise, we can uh, walk. I don't know if he can teleport everybody, though. I'm only disappointed that I don't have anything to show for this encounter. 
Usually I take trophies and You have a tuning fork. Is there fork? any chain left? Hey, I do have a tuning fork. Well, they're all like attached to that thing. You do, you do have the memories. Yeah. You do have the memories of it, yeah. I'll just have to tell some stories about this encounter. About how I uh, saved Raziel from a, a vicious <laughs> cat. Yeah, he'll... And then uh, he was at the more like how the frog, the frog saved Raziel. Yeah, I'll include Tiki in my ballad. He says he actually doesn't have... He isn't able to teleport all of you. So... But... He For says, just like leave Raziel behind. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I think Cor I think Corvosa's that way, so perhaps we'll just walk back. I think we can get there by the end of the day. Sure. We're not that sure. far. So he just walks back with you guys to Corvosa. We we chit chat a bit about this and that magic. I uh I summon an evil a, demi uh... Oh god. I summon myself a uh... Mage's speed, and I fail my oh, will yeah. save. All right, you write a write a slash or a, steed. Uh, summon a summon phantasmal steed. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's real for me. Over. Yeah, he casts Overland Flight and kind of just flies alongside you guys. But uh, I can use yeah. my domain power a but few yeah, more times he does, to give he myself does wizard flight. things. But yeah. I he he kind of says, I'm, spell, so. I have to be honest, I'm I'm hoping that I don't actually need to use this tuning fork that I got, but it is was very important that I got access to it. Oh, you're welcome. Brugar said. And that's, uh, he basically is going to travel with you guys back to Corvosa, and from there he's going to say, uh, you know, like, I'll, I'll get a hold of you guys if I ever need help again. Uh, you guys have done wonderfully in helping me with this task. Uh, I'll, I might, I'll definitely consider taking you up on that offer. And he, uh, he goes on his way, and you guys are basically free to do whatever you want, but we're going to kind of wrap up the session here, so... Yeah, it's already 9 yeah. o'clock. Rest. Rest. Yep. So, uh, give me a second to figure out how much experience you guys are going to get, because it's going to be quite a bit. None, because it was all just a dream. A story. I start telling my story about this uh, encounter. I'm rehearsing it with myself. 18.1. Are you not telling it at the bar? Uh, I don't Enough think to it's level quite us? That. Well, I it's think gonna that's take 18.1k. Oh, okay. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind that much. We killed I a don't big know that it's demon quite lion. That much. Level 11 is a big level for me. It's a demon lion. We, I so quest. Not big we got the tuning fork. Did we get yeah, it isn't quite that much. I think I gave you a little bit. Uh, this session is going to uh, be a pretty substantial 3, amount. We got 3,500 experience last session. Yeah, you're not what? quite getting that... Uh... I guess at some point when you guys are in there, Okie Dokie finds, uh, finds you guys and says, I delivered that letter for you. Oh, um, oh my god, the bird. <laughs> yeah, the bird. Why aren't you a dream? <laughs> Why aren't you a dream? Uh, you guys get, uh, 13,000 experience. Woohoo! Okay. We're at 99900 now. And, uh, yep, that'll kind of wrap up this session. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I had a blast. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah. 13, I had some stuff where I almost thousand? died. There was 13,000. Thousand? Uh -huh. It was a lot. It was a very difficult encounter. So, like, the, I mean, the hag, we beat a lot the hag stuff. was definitely way out of your CR, but it had a lot of stuff debilitating it. Like, the fact that it couldn't, it had to silent spell all of its spells. It couldn't cast any spells normally. Uh, yeah, and, and it was like, it wasn't a normal dream hag, right? No, it definitely was not a normal dream hag. It had uh, class levels and a bunch of templates and stuff. It was really strong. Um, if you guys had fought this thing uh, under like fair terms, it probably would have mopped the floor with you. But Dang. because it had all these penalties on it, I don't know it about was... that. Uh, all I had to do was take out me. me. That's for sure. Then. I mean, yeah. it could pretty much summon something as a free action. Oh yeah. 
I mean, I don't know what this monster does, but... I mean, it also I had... Either, but that's what it was doing in the dreamscape. And it could have some yeah. entire level things if it didn't have to do it silent. Um, no, no, no. it like, would have been it would have been a little bit weaker if you had decided to not fight it in the dreamscape if you guys were just like fighting it in normal ground and everyone like um it would have got complicated though because I would have had to have honestly, basically two different combats going on. The most dangerous thing to our party is their dreams character. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, he that's, shits that's out fair. There. If he gets, like, mind-controlled or something like if that, we, which it didn't... Yeah, I mean, if we protect him, then I think we can kill a lot or of people. Or if I don't pretty run hard. up... It didn't actually ourselves. do a dominate person spell or anything like that. But, yeah, um, like, if, if he gets dominated or something, then he can probably, like... any He can probably one-shot anybody but me. Yeah. Or if I he gets I'm confused. The only who could take his character out. If, if I have all my buffs up, yeah. Him if he did it's... that, or I would blind him or something. It is yeah, not yeah. It actually that uh, I get all my spells up like that though. And it actually like, I have to couldn't prepare cast everything. Dominate person because it doesn't have high enough spell slots to do a silent dominate person. Yeah, but yeah, so it could have yeah, charmed. You, you make a good though. point. I I have but, put yeah. a lot of effort into my will save for such a you know. Yeah, to no, try and that's, help. that's good. Um, I will tell you this much: it still had triple digit hit points, as well. At, at the end, end? Of that fight. yes. Even so, so what? What if my crit points? that the the haste crit that we had to undo? Yeah, had, what if that wasn't undone? It had HP it had triple like digits. Two hundred fifties or something. Yeah. No, I did more uh, than higher. that. Higher? It's higher than two hundred fifty. I did well, at you, least you did, like a hundred and fifty damage. Your damage was not hundred percent going through though, because you actually uh -huh. didn't weren't doing a damage type that was going through the dr. Uh, Kale was. Kale had a cold iron magic weapon. Even with like the plus it. three magic, it wasn't enough. Have. The Bane one was. Yeah, the Bane one was. Your other dagger wasn't. Oh, my mithril uh, was. Let me guess. My mithril dagger is not even CR eighteen. Uh, yeah, it's about it's normal? it's actually slightly lower than that uh, normally, but yeah. Okay. That's yeah, pretty good. Significantly so. top. It, yeah. it could take us out unless we got some like really good. I hits think on the it. highest CR. Like dream thing that you fought actually was the cat technically, but the cat was really binary. It had like four AC to go. and did a ton yeah. of damage, and that was all I did. Like it was a murder I mean, machine, but it, you could kill it instant really easily. Yeah, I think the dwarves were potentially the scariest thing if we didn't have any AOE to deal with them. If you didn't have AOE to deal with them, the yeah, dwarves would have been pretty nasty too. They could have done a ton of damage. Yeah, it was it was kind of interesting because I had um I had dreamscapes prepared for every character, but we didn't go through uh, Kales or Tiki's. And that was just kind of how the it was kind of yeah. random. Uh, there was a little bit of contextual stuff like based on who was coming after the most, but the first one was random and it rolled on. Uh, actually, I don't think I don't think really? the first one was. I don't think the first one was random. I, I think the first I one was because you stood up, up to it so. most. Yeah, I think I think the first one it walked up to. The one that went on Amber it had a fifty fifty chance of being Amber or being uh, uh, Kale, and it rolled Amber. Did the void uh, come from the mind blank or the uh, no memories to go through? Good question. Uh, if you think about it. You did actually, it did have one memory, like a landscape at the very end, though. That was, uh, where it had that memory devil show up. So that probably kind of gives you a hint on what the answer on that is. Ooh, you could have seen. Something that you don't Not remember. Not the mind blank. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it wasn't from the mind blank. It was from the fact that you just didn't actually have any memories for it to access. I don't know the if I understand that, because Amber has plenty of memories, just not old memories. Right, well, it tried to dig back through the orig the old memories, though, and it was scrolling through oh, them, okay. and it kind of got to, like, a more recent memory at the end there, but then after that, it didn't get any further, because um, it was triggered, yep. like, that was, that was, we got to, you guys got to the round yeah. where Athos's plan triggers like that was that was how I long think. you guys had to survive so and amber you guys Amber's like fine. the most like the oldest in the party for like relative age um middle age yeah brugar might be similar just because of dwarf lifespans but yeah 
I, I will say, Pluto, that that was a very well put together there, session. Well, I'm like, glad to encounter the it. session, the plan, like everything leading up to it. Like, damn, that's pretty cool. The yeah, whole mindscape was... stuff, which I had never heard of, but it was really cool to find out and learn about that. And how he was like trying to, he like got to the library he wanted yeah. and then tuned the fork that way. Like, that was really cool. I played a little so. bit loose with the rules on mindscapes, but. Oh, kind of sure, the parts but it's that a homebrew. Wanted, but yeah, it's a homebrew game, so I was like, "Ah, it's my rules. I do what I want." <laughs> but yeah, um... I, I saw something in there about like binary mindscapes, like both people can control them, and that's mm -hmm. where it's like maybe I can do something to influence the situation of this mindscape. But then you're like, you had, this uh... one, I'm like, okay, if you had the right spell, then uh, you could have done it. But you would need like a spell that I'm, interacts I'm, with my sorcerer that way. Yeah, that's true too. So you wouldn't have had it unless he brought like a scroll or something. But yeah. Pluto.